Back in the game and well at the top, a king of the ring and calling my spots. I'm raising the bar to crank it a notch. I'm full of mistakes, cause life is a box. Life can get brighter and brighter. I walk through that curtain, my levels get higher and higher. Studied the best in this generation, I'm next. Super kick party, no doubt we just hit a suplex. Hooker by crook, survive if I let you, they stand to their feet. Sports entertainment, professional wrestling, tickets keep selling, I've been all elite. What's happening? Attention dudes and dudettes, coming at you more live and more on the fly than a raw Russian roulette, we are here once again to bring you the most incredible botacular event and spectacle that you have ever seen. I'm talking about the Life Spots podcast, ladies and gentlemen. What's happening? It's your boy Dwayne, aka the Highlight Reel, joined by my favorite crew, you already know, because we gentlemen is over here talking about the first lady of the botch life, you already know what it is, Miss Ash Benny. And of course, my boy, Playboy Rick, as you know, we call him Pretty Boy Ricky, Pretty Ricky, what they call him. Y'all already know what it is. We in the building, y'all. What's up, family? Welcome back to week, what we, second episode together, man. How's that second feeling? Episode, second episode. Episode. Hey, 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 you know what I'm saying? Feels good, feels good. Uh, it does feel good, right? We got all the jitters mm-hmm. out the way, you know what I'm saying? The chemistry is getting better and better every week, man. I know they excited and feeling it. What? What's good? All right. Um, quick, quick moment to all of our listeners out there. Probably if you were looking on YouTube and you were looking, you saw our episode, but you probably didn't hear it. Uh, I'm just going to throw this in there now. You know, we kind of have a botch of the week award to throw out to my boy, Derek. <laughs> you know, he's our producer, you know, the man behind the scenes. Some of y'all hardcore listeners probably know him from the early days of Life's Botch when he was on the show. But Kind of had a little, you know, situation. He was kind of doing some things at once. And, you know, unfortunately, he posted the episode out the audio. So, sorry, guys. That's a yeah, botch on Derek's part. Happens. You know, it happens. <laughs> uh, but if you got to listen to the audio for my audio listeners out there, then you kind of heard everything in full effect. We are back. We are great. So, this time around, for my video listeners and audio, we're going to give y'all the best of both worlds this week. No botch is necessary. Therefore... Mm-hmm. Let's let's go get into it, man. This has been um, y'all. This this week, ooh, this week in wrestling was was a heavy one, man. Um, yeah, yeah. Gosh, yeah. like, who? Well, I st- I strictly still remember uh, <laughs> how I felt in both moments of this back to back news. Like, I was I was sitting here finding out Wednesday night, like, oh man, did y'all hear? You know, uh, Terry Falk passed away. I'm like, whoa, ter- for real? legendary terry funk like man he finally left us man like i, I couldn't believe it because i was like man he's been here so long they, they, they yeah they be around so was like, he was gonna go nowhere yeah so i'm <laughs> like i was like okay that was a pleasant surprise but then man ash you you just you broke because yeah. like, like I, I i'll never forget boy i'm cruising through atlanta man i got a gig i'm i'm literally like not even 10 minutes away from my, my 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 event that I have to be at. I see, um, I don't practice this, y'all, so texting and driving is not necessarily something I ask y'all to do, but I just happened to be doing it because I saw the buzz and was like, okay, what's going on? I'm at a stoplight. I see Ash say, y'all, I'm like, oh, what happened? What did we do? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, they saying Bray Wyatt passed away. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I was yeah. like, it was like, where's the receipt? Yeah, I was like, hold on. I was like, like, where's the source? Like, where's the source on this one? I need to know who shorted this. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's crazy. <laughs> Yo, so we we, we gonna get we're gonna get into this thing and get y'all the thoughts. I mean, we're laughing because we're gonna make this a lighthearted episode for y'all as much as possible. Because we like to botch podcasts, you know what I'm saying? What we do is we're here to literally bring y'all laughs as much as possible, get y'all the vibes. Take y'all outside of an element, and and most importantly, check on check in on you wrestling fans out there, man. We got to make sure first and foremost y'all all right, man. I mean, I know people out there like, yo, these are people y'all don't even really know. That's been the common thing I've heard people talk about, but it's like, yes, but when you are a wrestling fan, it's a little different. It's like you really yeah. do know them, you know. You grow with their yeah. character, you know. We were with Bray when he was Husky. We were with Bray when he was Bray Wyatt, the cult leader. Bray Wyatt, the fiend, you know, and all these things. This is this is part of us in a sense. We've grown as he's grown in front of us. So trust me, yeah. it, it it hits. You know, it hits. Uh, much like much like you, Kobe Bryant, 
lovers out there, man. Um, rest in peace to the Black Mamba. It's it's, it's just one of those okay. things, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, we could argue and say this was on that level, to be honest. But um, yeah. it was yeah. on the same day. <laughs> yeah. So 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 again, this is just a PSA to all my wrestling fans listening right now. Uh, consider this a group therapy session um, to express how you feel, but also in a way where you're expressing it in a very lighthearted manner. Uh, we're going to reflect on the positives, none of the negatives. There will be no negative reflects on, oh, well, he wasn't booked correctly or this and that. Nah, it's not about that on this show. We, we are here to show love, pay respects, and uh, also just take y'all mind off of things in a lighthearted way to make y'all laugh as much as we possibly can. So uh, with my crew, as we here, like I said, we got Playboy Rick, we got Ash Benny, and your highlight reel right here. With that being said, let's get right on into this thing. It's only fitting to start off. Um, normally, we start off with what's cooking, but we're just going to go right into it, as we mentioned. Uh, wrestling lost a pretty much a legend slash Hall of Famer and a future legend and Hall of Famer in uh, Wyndham, Bray Wyatt, Rotunda, and of course, Terry Funk, as you know. So, um Guys, I'm about to open up the floor to y'all, and let's just let's just talk about uh, where you're at right now since hearing this news. How you feeling? And let's just get into it, man. Do y'all have any favorite um, Bray Wyatt moments uh, that will resonate with you forever going forth from this tragic news we received? Kick it off, Ash. So something that always sticks out to me. And it's like a lot of people say is like their favorite moment in like modern some one of their favorite moments in modern wrestling is like the April 2016 episode of Raw when Roman and Bray had to team up against the League of Nations. And they had that incredible um, it was like main event of that night. And they had that incredible spot where Bray hits the sister Abigail. And then at the same time, he like points the Pointed, two fingers yep. <laughs> at Roman and then Roman hits the spear. Like that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite, one of my favorite Bray moments. And one of the ones that like immediately came to mind when I heard of his passing. Wow. Yeah, that moment was, uh, I do remember that rivalry for sure. Like they, they, um, it was very underrated for that time because I know that was still Roman. Uh, the Roman people kind of purposely Pico! hated it. You know, big dog, <laughs> big dog Roman, <laughs> big dog Roman era, you know, so a lot of people try to forget that era most times because of uh, how tribal chiefs have been so awesome from those days. It's kind of funny that when you look back at Bray's rivalries, uh, that Roman was definitely one of his top rivalries. Uh, so I like that moment, Ash. That was that was real good. Yeah, that was that was a dope one. Um, how about you, Playboy Rick? What 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 stands out to you as that like a standout Bray Wyatt moment, especially for I you? mean. Just every time Bray touched the mic, you might not know what he was talking about, but it was it was butter. Like he was smooth on the mic, every rip. Mm-hmm. Like you you couldn't take that away from him. Like like you said, you can't you can you can talk about his booking and all that, but the mic you couldn't take that away from him. Agreed. Um, you know, yes, it's arguable. You know, when you talk about like greatest of all time on the mic most times it's like charisma it's you know someone like the rock or someone like a chris jericho or people who captivate you in ways where they make you laugh la knights getting up there in these ways uh people who can make you laugh people who can you know put a picture in ways where you're like carry just carry a show with their words bray doesn't get enough credit um from that mic skill persona I felt like I feel like he gets it from a creative standpoint, but the fact that, like you said, even if you didn't know, like compare him to say like an ultimate warrior, ultimate yeah, warrior would I'm say things say and you were like, yeah, he, ultimate warrior says things. You don't really know what the heck ultimate warrior was talking about mm-hmm. because he was At so all. intense. <laughs> Boy, the powers be, you know, you're like, okay. Yeah. You know, you're like, okay. I have no idea what you're talking about, my guy, but I'm with you. Let's go. Let's yeah. let's let's mm-hmm. hold yeah, up there, you know. Amp you up. <laughs> so, but Bray, man, that aura of his words and and it was like, I don't know. Well, I think I remember seeing something. I think it was a documentary or something. Yeah, it was the uh, the FCW documentary. 
Okay. They uh, and if if you guys don't remember, you can go on. It should be on Peacock. I think they still technically have the network when they did it, but they did a documentary on FCW and and you know how that life, you know, because people didn't realize that before NXT became the Performance Center NXT, you had FCW that was like NXT in a sense when NXT was still that competition NXT. So the thing about the FCW era was that was the era where Bray started to develop. And that's when we were starting to get the early stages of Bray Wyatt when he was talking. And I think they even said uh, when he was Husky, even when he was Husky Harris, like he would talk in an aura where you couldn't necessarily get what he was saying, but you gravitated to it because you knew it was something about it in the way he talked that made you interested and made you pay attention. And I don't think that gets enough credit, y'all. I mean, how, how y'all feel on his mic skills? I mean, what, what would y'all say? I mean, yeah, he had like, incredible mic skills. One of his last promos from like October of last year, like immediately comes to mind when he kind of like dropped the Bray Wyatt character and he was just Wyndham like talking to the audience. Mm -hmm. That's probably like my favorite promo that he's ever done. It wasn't like super in character or anything, but it was, especially now, like a super sentimental moment. I, I think about the the John Cena, him and John Cena's feud when they had the little Eminem promo package. Like that, <laughs> that was money. That yes. was money right there. Yes. Like, that, that fit in perfect. Yes, I, I heard I heard some other uh, shows actually talk about that very moment you mentioned with the Eminem promo package. And it's it's just crazy how you wouldn't think an Eminem song of all songs going with something like with, with Bray Wyatt, but it, it did yeah. fit. I mean, it like, fit hard. It was, it was money, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. uh, my, my standout moment to Bray, granted, he had a lot for me, uh, but I, I'm torn between two because it, the, for me, I, I thought about, you know, and, and shout out to this wrestler who had a beautiful, Instagram post just to show tribute, but I I thought about him and and Woken Matt Hardy, you know, teaming up together, okay. and it was kind of funny because I know some people kind of at that time might have shunned it a little bit at that time because I know that was when Bray was kind of transitioning a little bit, but I think about like how for that version of Bray that was the closest to a babyface Bray we ever got, and mm -hmm. the fact that. It just it, it it was weird how that actually did gel because Matt Hardy was very over with that broken gimmick and you know of course WWE did their version of it with the Woken Matt Hardy but the fact that they were able to take it do a final deletion uh, together and then actually go on to be tag team champions together and like it was getting over you know it was actually yeah. doing its thing and I felt like it didn't last long enough really but i think about that moment in the royal rumble where they went from being enemies one royal rumble to the, the year following they actually like teaming up together and eliminating people and it's like man it was just it was a great moment but my other moment is more like the debut of the fiend character and that SummerSlam 2019 when he went against finn balor and just like straight dominated as the fiend it oh. was like that entrance, man, was so eerie, like, to see yeah. the Fiend literally make his physical presence to us, where we were like, what is this? <laughs> like, I don't even know. Like, am I going to have nightmares? Or am I actually, like, excited for what I'm seeing right now because of how, like, you feel like that monster sometimes, you know? Like, everybody has that side a little bit, where you're like, this is me, and then that's me. But you don't want to see that version because when that version comes uh -huh. out, it's about to get real. <laughs> <Yeah. You know? laughs> I, I actually showed some of my guys that didn't watch wrestling at all the little uh, Fun Firefly Funhouse promo packages, and they're like, "This, this is crazy!" Like, what? They, they, they was like, they got to watching. Like, they were just like, "Hey, pull up another clip." I was like, "Oh, that you didn't see it? Like, let me yeah. let me pull it up." Yeah, no, facts. I showed my girlfriend, um, this is before, you know, she had just got back from a, a hiatus uh, retreat of like no technology, no cell phone. So like she wasn't aware of what happened until I updated her on yesterday. So we kind of stayed up watching and I was showing her a lot of the Bray Wyatt stuff and she was actually starting to appreciate him more than the first time because the first time I showed her Bray 
and why people love them. She just wasn't really into the whole dark, eerie side of stuff, right? And it's actually kind of fun, you know, from a lady's journey to show, you know, Ash, I'm sure you can relate from when you first kind of got into wrestling, but it's kind of funny when, uh, when the ladies kind of gravitate to who they gravitate to in first watch. But then if there's someone you didn't care for, but that person is trying to tell you like, hey, trust me, I know you don't care for that person, but watch them. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. it'll be this. Now she's at the point when I went back, showed her the fiend, showed her, you know, Colt Bray. I showed her the WrestleMania 30 entrance that he had, you know, and all of that. Like she was just like, okay, now all of a sudden I'm really like starting to understand him more. Like I'm really starting to gravitate. And I was just like, that's that's the she, thing, you know. It, it, it yeah. sucks that these circumstances she's feeling like she missed out. A little she bit, yeah. Like she missed yeah out. A little bit, but now she's, you know, now after seeing the purpose, I think it's because when you see someone portray a character like Michelle McCool with the Undertaker, you remember how uh, y'all heard the Taker talk that story about meeting Michelle McCool and how Michelle McCool is like one pe- two people I don't want to meet ever is Kane and the Undertaker <laughs> for obvious reasons right because you see their presence and you're like yeah. you're thinking yeah. who you see them on TV is yeah you're thinking that's them in real life and you're like yeah. no in real life they're actually very genuine they're just playing this character so yeah. you know um but yeah just so we talked about moments do you guys have any particular matches from Bray Wyatt that stood out to you guys the most Um, I'll I'll say uh Survivor Series uh, against Daniel Bryan because I was there in Shot Town. So oh, like awesome. that, I wasn't a I wasn't a fan of the red light, but I was I, I got to experience it live. So it ain't too bad live. It's just on TV. It's just a little bit much, but oh, it, it was it was it was money seeing them come seeing the Fiend entrance. You know, I was I was right there, Kitty Corner on the stairs. So I was right behind him when he. Did the neck snap, ran up the stairs, you know, had the belt <laughs> on his neck. Okay. Yeah, that's, so, that's you, awesome. so you were you you experienced fiend brain. That that is live, live, live and direct. Yep. Yeah, I, I got to experience fiend brain as well live, but it was unfortunately a live event. Uh so oh, I got to experience that. both versions of Bray in live event, unfortunately. I haven't gotten to see Bray. So Fiend Bray was at a live event they did. Uh, I treated myself on my birthday one year, and it was uh, a live event. I think it was the Starcade, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, no, that was another one. It was a totally different live event. It was just a live event that was on this side of town I'm at. Went to it, and Fiend Bray was still kind of like a new thing. And they did like a steel cage match with him and Braun Strowman, which I found very interesting because I was like, oh, Cause that was when Braun was like Braun Braun and I'm like Fiend is new and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be interesting. Like I know this is a live event, but are we gonna get this on TV? Like are this, yeah. is this a feud coming? And never unfortunately got it, but uh it was cool to actually see it and uh to just experience that aura of like like you said, the red lighting, yeah. the lights, uh everything was cool. And then of course the recent incarnation of Bray that we didn't get to see a lot of, unfortunately, I got to see also at a live event when I took my girlfriend right. to her first one. And oh, wow. unfortunately, the only thing that was sad about it was they did an intermission and me and my buddy and his wife were all like outside by the merch table. We're just kind of talking and killing time. Next thing you know, I, this is a memory I can share because of the fact that it just goes to show how great Bray really was. We were in there during that intermission and I kid you not, we stopped for a second after mid talk and we were like, hold up, that's Bray's music. Everybody took off running. Mm -hmm. They had to get right into the arena because they were ready. As soon as they heard Bray's music, they knew, oh, we got to see Bray, hold on. So that that to me told me out of anybody, if yeah. you knew Bray was going to be in the building, you had to go run and see this man's entrance. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, what about you, Ash? Did you have any memorable Bray Wyatt matches that you got to see? Uh, I didn't get to see him live, unfortunately. I'm super bummed about that. But one that always sticks in my head is definitely WrestleMania 36, John Cena versus Bray yeah. Wyatt. 
okay team bray wyatt oh, that yeah. match i feel like is like gonna like stand the test of time just how cool and introspective it is in terms of like his character and john cena's character and how they both intertwine and i just thought it was really really cool yeah you know um i totally agree that is a great selection by the way just because Thank you. you picked one from a time frame that was so weird for us wrestling fans at that yeah. time we were like wait the world shut down no sports mm-hmm. no nothing yeah this is weird <laughs> right and yeah. the fact that vince was man enough to say you know what say what we will about the guy but the fact that he was like no we got to give the people something Mm-hmm. We got to find a creative way to do it. So the fact that we did it in the cinema style, you know, boneyard match, and then this uh-huh. match for John Cena was like, wow. You know, a fever just, dream. It was yeah. a fever. Literally a fever dream. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> fever dream. And, and let's talk about how creative that match was and the fact that, you know, uh, I'm not the type of smoke, but it's like, <laughs> if I did watching that match, <laughs> That would have probably tripped me out 10 times more than it probably did so Because it was like, what's happening right now? <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, it was it was, it was was great, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was a, a wonderful moment. So props to you for sure, Ash, um, on, on that wonderful selection, given that time frame. That will mm-hmm. definitely stand the test of time for sure. Um, I guess for me to close it out on that part is I will say my favorite – Bray Wyatt match. Uh, it's probably got to be the Elimination Chamber when he won the uh, WWE Championship for the first time. Mm. Just the fact mm. of, you know, the fact that it was in an Elimination Chamber that he pinned AJ Styles and John Cena within that same night uh, and how crazy that crowd went. Um, that moment and that, that event was just like, this right here was definitely great and i think i'm I'm not even gonna lie i'm gonna be unpopular like most and i'm I'm probably gonna say my other favorite match also in its own creative way that people probably will go back and watch now that house of horrors match with randy orton yeah that match, <laughs> hey man looking back at it very different very unique i remember thinking even then when it was live like hey this is kind of cool you know because i think that was that was right before um the whole cinema style stuff, mm-hmm. anyway, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, before it was really catching on. So the fact that they did that was kind of cool to me. And um, I don't know why all these moments keep coming. Cause I even think about the Wyatt family in the new day when they did that, uh, even though that was kind of like a response to <laughs> uh, when Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy were in TNA at that time and they were doing the final deletion and it got super viral. Uh, I guess WWE was like, you know what, we're going to put one of these on too and see see what happens. So it took New Day and the Wyatt family and was like, hey, we're just going to have y'all like come out and just like go crazy, you know? And yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't know. That, that, that was definitely another fun moment. But um, salute to definitely the entire Rotunda family and the fact that our prayers and thoughts are always with you. Uh, you know, Bray lives on forever, literally forever. Um, muscle man dance, muscle man dance, all day, man all dance, day. Baby. You know <laughs> <laughs> so transitioning, uh, the night before, unfortunately, we lost another legend as well in Terry Funk, uh, hardcore legend, innovator of the deathmatch style. Uh, many say that Mick Foley is a hardcore legend, which he is. So if he is a hardcore legend, to me, I look at Terry Funk as a hardcore god if that's the case. Um, Only because, I mean, this man passed away, y'all, at 79 years old. And I was watching Beyond the Mat, a nice throwback uh, movie to any of my 90s wrestling fans out there. If you haven't seen Beyond the Mat, it is available on YouTube. You can pull it up, just look up Beyond the Mat, and you can watch that movie in full. But it's little soundbite segments on Terry Funk. And... um, it's, it's covering, of course, ECW, WWE, and the Attitude Era, uh, along with indie wrestling, which at that time was not as big as it is now. So you kind of got a glimpse of what indie wrestling was like back in the day versus how it is now. Um, so it's really a, a, a movie that's aging very well in terms of looking how far wrestling has come since those days. But 
Terry Funk is featured as one of the main characters in this show or this movie. And um, literally at 53 years old, you see them with him in the doctor's office. You see where they're talking about his knees and how bad his knees were. Like he's like, doctors tell him like, yeah, this cartilage here completely gone. You definitely need a new knee. This cartilage mm-hmm. over here is barely hanging on, but mm-hmm. you know, this and that, like he's just telling him this at 53 years old. And this man was in ECW prime at this moment, determined that he was going to put this company over and had to wrestle a match that same night. And he even asked the mm-hmm. doctor, Hey, do if I don't get the knee replacement, will I still be able to make it through? And he's like, you shouldn't have been able to make it through right now, to be honest, but I recommend you're going to need this wow. like ASAP. So, and just to see how his family is so worried, his wife, his, his kids, all of them worried about him as they watch him wrestle. Like every time he took a bump through a table or through barbed wire or anything crazy in that ECW arena, it was like, you could see the fear on their faces. And it's just, I, I look at it this way, y'all, as I get, you know, transitions it to you guys and y'all thoughts. For me, when I look back at Terry Funk, I look at it this way. Um, Regardless of what anyone believes out there, in my personal opinion, when I look at Terry Funk, uh, you could tell he was a believer in Christ and a believer in God. And I look at it as he's he's a living example of how real God is to me because of the fact that if he was going through that at 53 and beyond the mat, which came out in the 90s, and he had been at that point wrestling for 32 years and he passes mm-hmm. away at 79 years old, outliving his own wife. You can't tell me God does not exist if that's the case. Like, regardless of what you want to believe, y'all, that's just my personal opinion on Terry Funk. I, I, that man lived, in my opinion, way longer than the average wrestler should live or does live. And uh, I'm I'm grateful for what he gave the wrestling business, what he continues to give the wrestling business, and really how the death match is still going on. I mean, we see companies like GCW carrying that on to the fullest, and you see how these wrestlers still love to implement this style. It's not for everybody, but the fact that if you like the death match hardcore style which i did at one point but even now (laughs) it's kind of like as i've gotten older it's a little cringy now i'm like i don't know right you know but uh yeah guys y'all share your thoughts um on terry funk and you know maybe share like a favorite hardcore match even if it's not from funk like just a hardcore match that you remember that stands out i'm interested to see what benny gotta say because she a baby so she got to she got to <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. You're putting me on, on the spot. spot. <laughs> Wake you wrong for that, bro. You, but you I, will say this. I will say this. I will say this. So I like in terms of like hardcore matches, I got to go back and, you know, I got to get on my Zoom. I got to do my homework when it comes to that. You guys can like recommend me some good matches. OK, but right. I had like when I was in high school, I had like a serious Sylvester Stallone era. Like I was like obsessed with Sylvester Stallone. And one of the movies that I would I would always watch was Over the Top. And, okay. <laughs> yeah, and Terry Funk was in Over the Top. So, nice. so I will say that. So that, that's nice. always like my little nice. memory of him. Okay. I like that. No, I like yeah. that. We were just talking about his uh, movie days too. Shout out to those days, man, for sure. Um, what stands out to me, I, I wasn't too familiar with Terry, but uh, the New Age Outlaws were my tag team back in the day. And mm-hmm. when... They saw Charlie came out. That's that was the first time I really remember. Like, okay, he got the nylon over his face. He uh, <laughs> and then the, uh, what was it, the dumpster match, and uh, the New Age Outlaw tossed him off the stage. Like, I was like, okay, they they killing it. Yeah, I believe they they had another match at a uh, Royal Rumble too in New York when they had the the WrestleMania 2000 camera view where they had the entrance right in the middle, like right on the hard cam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I remember those that, days. That was, <laughs> um so for me you know hardcore matches uh, i used to be a hardcore fiend at one point as a kid so it's it's a little brief because i haven't watched as many of them as i used to now i can say for ash typically um anything 
that comes to mind for me is like when I think of like Shane McMahon and some of the hardcore matches he had, mm. uh, like the one with him and Steve Blackman, I believe that was SummerSlam. I think it was like SummerSlam 96 okay. or seven, one of those, uh, might've even been 98, but that was a, that was a pretty uh, good hardcore match. Like WWE's hardcore matches were a little more somewhat okay. safe. Yeah, somewhat okay. tame. Yeah, yeah they, they, they were still crazy, but they weren't chaotic like ECW. Because I'm not going to lie, y'all. I I still try to make myself go back and watch ECW because I never watched it that often. I just remember mm-hmm. highlight moments. Mm-hmm. But I need to start training myself to go back and watch ECW because I was such a WWE person that I watched other promotions, but I didn't watch them, right? Mm-hmm. So like, I'm going to... Go back. So, I, you know, you and me both, Ash, we're going to do our history together. <laughs> so don't worry. Uh, but I will say anything Terry Funk did basically with Mick Foley is worth watching. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. That, that man always made magic with Mick Foley, whether it's like what Playboy Rick was mentioning, whether you watch his stuff in WWE when he was Chainsaw Charlie and you saw their feuds with the New Age Outlaws when they got thrown in the dumpster and dumpster thrown off the stage uh you know or if you watch like he said the the what was that royal rumble i believe that match was that they had the yeah winner. i think that was that was the official match that, that was when they tossed them off that's what led to the match that's why they had the dumpster match royal right, rumble right. i can't remember what it might have been 98 or 99 yes 98 99 somewhere around there and i know when mick foley's cactus jack that's when you really want to watch Oh, yeah. Anything he did with Terry Funk. Cactus Jack was the craziest persona out of probably any Mick Foley persona. So he was the one that wouldn't be afraid to go through any barbed wire tables. They set themselves on fire. They go through flaming table, whatever, you name it. So, uh, but we will definitely do some justice and get, go back into that so we can uh, give you guys more proper respects to our, our guy, Terry Funk, for sure. Um, but I do like that memory of being a Stallone fan where we caught him in over the top. <laughs> that that movie is so perfect to describe Terry Funk and his career. Over the top, because he did yeah, over the top. Yeah. Legit. Great movie as well. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? I love it. Yeah. I love it. There's nothing wrong with our guilty pleasure. Shout out to that for sure. Um, so um, real quick, before we close this segment of things out, what I want to ask you guys now is, what did you guys think of we saw you know wwe given how fresh that bray news was happening that thursday night we knew going into friday night smackdown it was going to be emotional we knew like okay this whatever plans they did have for tonight are going to be completely altered by this passing of bray and terry funk um so from that smackdown on up to this point from what you guys have seen uh How do you feel WWE has handled their tribute to Bray and Terry Funk, as well as AEW, Impact Wrestling, and some of these other promotions out here that have really saluted these two greats? I didn't catch SmackDown, so I didn't see, but I've I've been seeing that they they did a little tribute on NXT. So, you know, they they, they keeping it up, you know, but it's just, this is rough for everybody. Yeah. yeah the smackdown episode was super emotional it was super emotional like i cried a little during the tribute when they played it was like a maybe like a two to three minute clip they played of in tribute to bray it was really really well done and then i think like the way they ended the show with kind of like doing his entrance cutting the lights and then allowing everyone to put their fire quiet yeah their fireflies out so i thought that was really really sweet and then the the part with the chair after the 10 bell salute oh, yeah with the spot yeah. oh yeah did, that, was, that, that was yeah. yeah that was that was heavy it was heavy yeah, it was it was heavy it gave a lot of chills for sure um mm-hmm. kind of made me think of like that day when we if we god forbid if we ever lose mark undertaker callaway man you know it's, it's something oh, yeah, similar that they be would, you know they would they would yeah. do something very esque to that you know you'd see that urn and you know spotlight and just lightning bolt lightning bolts yeah Yeah, i could see it you know what i mean Uh, maybe a coffin even uh so it's like but uh no i agree that that was really in a very emotional heavy smackdown and uh my favorite part of it was probably (laughs) 
for sure my favorite part of that had to be the main event, man, to see L.A. Knight come out there and really prove how much of a star he really is to people. He killed because it. Because yeah. he killed that. I mean, he, he so far this man, I mean, everybody trying to down, man, that WWE's not pushing LA Knight the way they should. Yes, they are. If you're paying attention, yeah. this man is getting a slow rise and it's getting bigger mm-hmm. and bigger by the week. And this feud with The Miz is helping get uplift even more because the thing about it is the fact that he was able to come out there, you could see that he wasn't his usual LA Knight self because there was a part of him emotionally breaking down. I could see it in his eyes, right? But he was holding it together because he was focused. And to come out there, cut a promo on Bray, switch it to Miz to make you laugh (laughs) and then go right back to being serious and give a salute to Bray with that run looking yeah. in the screen like it was just like oh man that was pure perfection my guy like you you, yeah. you nailed that um and for him to go over and just beat finn who also was a nice rivalry of bray in his own right it was it was just like yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. um so yeah i would say smackdown was definitely uh a nice salute uh shout out to alexa bliss giving her tribute uh message she didn't do it on smackdown but to anyone who didn't get to see it uh, make sure you just check out her video. She posted it a little bit before SmackDown started because she couldn't make it uh, in time, but she gave a nice tribute of words and so shout out to Seth Rollins as well, giving a nice emotional message and all those out there, even Becky. Uh, she was in Memphis, you know, and I don't know if y'all got to see that, but even after the show, uh, she, yeah, she cut a promo know. about her. Yeah. Seth, Seth had the side play song too. He had the Fiend yeah. side play from his belt. Yeah. yeah, I was like, man, that was that was beautiful. So much love to everybody uh for that. Like I said, uh we wanted to make it, but real quick before we uh transition here, I got one more question for you guys right here. Give me your top. I say, well, you know what? I won't do top three. So it's three of us. Everybody, real quick in a quick round, give me your top. Ray Wyatt feud. Ooh. John Cena. <laughs> John Cena. Yeah. yeah, it's John Cena. John Cena? John Cena. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Ash, I like gonna... John Cena. You like John Cena? A, yeah. A part of me wants to say Roman Reigns just because I feel like Bray was, in terms of like, he was very like, he played a huge role in how the main event scene looks now. So I'll say I'll say Roman. Say Roman, okay. Um, I'm going to go with. In my opinion, I'm just gonna say Daniel Bryan, man. I think uh, him and Daniel Bryan made a lot of magic together as well. Uh, oh yeah, that was a great match. Uh, those two, uh, it was something about those two that just it gelled. You know what I mean? So it really just fit the aura of what they were. So. I like those answers all the way around. You know, those I I'd say if we put those together, that's a solid top three right there. Uh, Roman Reigns, John Cena, Daniel Bryan, those three rivals will live on forever uh, for Bray Wyatt. So, salute again. And uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, what we're gonna do is take a quick, quick break, and we will be right back with what's cooking in just a second. All right. Welcome back, y'all. What's going on? What's going on? It's your boy, the Highlight Reel, joined by the First Lady Ash Benny. And of course, you can't forget that Playboy Rick. Pretty Rick is what they call him. You already know. <laughs> this is the Lice of Bosch podcast. And uh, first and foremost, man, uh, you are now in a new segment with us right here. Uh, not new, new. This is something that y'all might know from last episode. But this is the thing we normally start to show up with, where, of course, we had to give a Beautiful, beautiful tribute episode dedicated to Cherry Funk and Bray Wyatt. So make sure you hit that rewind if you haven't checked it out already. Uh, And let's go ahead and get into what's cooking. So, y'all, this has been a interesting wrestling week outside of what we had to emotionally deal with. We had some wrestling that, you know, because the show must go on. So we had a lot of wrestling going on. So uh, AEW. Or as they say, uh, the name as of late has been all elementary wrestling as of late, (laughs) from what I've been told. So uh, I I, I thought I thought it was all XWWE. (laughs) 
Oh my goodness Man. gracious. Oh my Sheesh. gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yo, uh, AEW Wrestling uh, had a pay per view, a historic pay per view, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Um, okay. If you didn't know, it was a re- very WrestleMania esque level pay-per-view uh in most cases this is their version of wrestlemania because this was their first uh event that kicked off this whole aew phenomenon so all in is kind of like their anniversary of where it all started kind of thing so this is like their wrestlemania uh 81 000 plus in attendance in london at the wembley stadium basically packed out the house, man. Um, I know from watching the show, I felt it. I said, okay, not going to lie. They did that. Like, they, boy, they, yeah. it was, yeah. them fans showed up. And, and I mean, I, it, it, WWE, it, this kind of made me just think of John Cena. And I said to myself, you know, y'all been trolling this, but after seeing this show, because I know y'all watched it. Y'all might want to take John Cena up on that promo. Y'all might want to consider that WrestleMania in the UK, my guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ooh, that Minneapolis. I think they, yeah. yeah, I was like, I, I mean, all due respect, I love the States, but I'm just saying, like, uh, you know, y'all might want to do that, bro, because they they trying to prove a point over there. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's all exactly I'm that's saying. Over there. That's all I'm saying. That all in kind of signified that. I said, if that was WrestleMania, boy, if they can do that for yeah. AEW, yeah, they 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 have people sitting outside for WrestleMania if they did it. Count that as the attendance, right? Be like, they, they, oh. would count that as, they would put screens outside yeah. and, and and charge for seats. There you go. Right. Count that as attendance. Be like, oh, y'all got eighty one thousand. Okay, oh, watch we, this. We did a hundred k right quick. Let's get that. Something, like, something, like, yeah. something like you know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, guys. So. um let me go ahead and just pull up right here what the scorecard was for our event that we had. So uh, me and Rick kind of started this back in the day. So some of my faithful listeners, y'all might remember our scorecard predictions. Uh, well, now that we have a new trio, a new look, and we have a lady <laughs> present upon us, we, we now this is even more fun than it used to be because we now have what we call our <laughs> score prediction cards. Yeah, we got to come up with a cute little name for this thing. But, uh, you know, we, we got a, we got our little score predictions card where we basically uh, I text them in our group chat and said, hey, guys, give me your quick predictions with everything for all in on today. I don't know why I almost said all elite in. I was like trying to pause and keep myself from botching, y'all. That's why I paused. <laughs> but. All in definitely took its toll. And uh, so we're going to go down the list of how everybody fared. So as far as the matches we had for WWF, see, almost did it again. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, AEW, <clears throat> all in 2023, Wembley Stadium. Here was your match card. You had in total. Uh, so in your pre-show, you had Jack Perry versus Hook. Uh, for the FTW championship, the title that does not even get acknowledged, but they defend it like it does. I don't know. I make mm-hmm. it. Uh, <laughs> Adam Cole and MJF versus Aussie Open for the Ring of Honor the Tag Team Championships. Um, this was controversial to people because they're like, why are your main eventers in the pre show for a match before the? I don't know. Make that make sense, but it worked. It, it, it They still got their pops in the end, so it worked. Yeah. It worked. Um, then, of course, and this is no particular order of how the event went. I'm just listing the card for you guys in case you didn't know. Uh, you had Sting and Darby go against Swerve and Christian Cage in a casket match. Uh, you had the acclaimed and badass Billy Gunn, not daddy ass, y'all. Badass Billy Gunn, because apparently there's a difference. Just in case nobody knew this, there's a Daddy difference. ass retired. Daddy ass retired. 
He retired and apparently badass Billy Gunn is a lot more Came badass back. than we ever remembered. I, I'm like, wait, you were? You know, when, when was badass this bad? I don't remember. I, okay, I don't know. I guess maybe maybe he channeled when he in was that pushing that dumpster. That's when he was bad. I, yeah, I guess I guess so. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it was a trios match against the House of Black for the AEW Trios Championships. Uh, you had CM Rogers or CM Hogan, CM Punk, however you want to, you know, we'll get more on that later, uh, versus Samoa Joe for the real AEW championship. Um, Bullet Club Gold versus the Golden Elite. The Golden Elite consisting of Ibushi, Adam Hangman Page, and Kenny Omega, you know, you got to specify these things because you're like, well, who's the elite and who's the golden elite? That's why they're the golden elite. <laughs> so um, then we had a fatal four way where we had Soraya, Britt Baker, Carl Shida, and Tony Storm in a fatal four way for the AEW Women's Championship. We had the Young Bucks versus FTR uh, for the AEW Tag Team Championships. Then we had the Bullet Club. Wait, Bullet Club. No, I'm sorry. The Beatdown, the BCC, doggone it. The BCC versus the Lucha Brothers. Well, actually, no. I thought it was the Lucha Brothers. I actually botched that on my end because, come to find out, Phoenix, the brother of Penta, actually couldn't make the trip. So it was actually just Penta and the best friends. So Orange Cassidy and the best friends go against the BCC which consisted of John Moxley, Willer Yuta, Claudio Castanova, and, uh, oh, and then Eddie Kingston also was in this uh, on the side of, you know, Penta. He replaced Penta's brother, I believe. So that was that. And then, of course, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty much that match. Uh, it was a stadium stampede in London, which people were trying to figure out how they were going to do that in front of 80 plus thousand people. Uh, and then, of course, your main event was MJF versus Adam Cole for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, so I went down the prediction card, gave you guys, you know, hey, what, what do y'all pick? And y'all said, OK, give me this, give me that, give me that. So I'm here with the overall tally. So let me go ahead and just give the overall tally. OK. All right. So. We've got Rick coming in at a final score of eight of his predictions being correct, which gave him a total of eight. Right. Applause for my boy, Playboy Rick. All right. Miss um, Ash Benny. Ash Benny. Ah, girl, you hit it on the nail right there. You also tallied in, tying with Rick at eight a piece yeah. in predictions. <laughs> you got correct. So that is eight and eight right there. And Yours truly, this guy right here, man, I ended up tallying in nine correct, getting a score of nine. So I actually got one by one. Now, here's the only reason why I'm actually one point above you guys. I'm actually one point above you guys because you guys both actually missed a prediction. Y'all missed a prediction that, and I know it was a lot of matches on the card, so y'all probably might not have seen it in the text. I tried to space it out. <laughs> but there was one that you guys forgot about, which I believe was the, let's see, I didn't get a prediction from y'all from, oh gosh, which one was it? I think it was the, no, y'all gave me Soraya. It was the Fatal 4-Way. Uh, was it the House of... I think it was the, yeah, I think it was the trios title match. Yeah, with the House of Black and the, no, hold on. Y'all did, y'all did pick that. It wasn't that one. It was, oh, Young Bucks and FTR. That's the one I didn't get predictions from y'all from. Okay. The tag team okay. title match. Uh, so, unfortunately, okay. by default, that means you guys <laughs> both got that wrong because you didn't really, you know, on, on that. So, I'm up by one. Okay. But that doesn't, you know, we got payback, so we're gonna give our payback predictions, you know. And, six for six. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, y'all probably catch up to. <laughs> we're gonna see, we're gonna see. Me and Rick typically make this pretty fun, and we do this, you know. Sometimes, even when we know the outcome, we may just be like, for, 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 you know, for the heck of it, let's do just a let's, let's do a little swerve pick. So sometimes it's okay just to let you know, Ash, going forward, if you want to make swerve picks, 
where you like, I know that so-and-so is probably going to return, but I'm just going to be on the wild side and choose this person because I got a feeling this person might actually win in a swerve. Yeah. You know, you can do that, right? Just, just going to put that out there that I'm the reigning champ. So, you know what I'm saying? Just put that out there. <laughs> uh, technically, <laughs> technically, yes. But it's a new season. We got a new crew. It's a new season. This is gonna, it's gonna change a lot, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. Three. Yeah, let's get it. Okay, so um, like I said, uh, going down through the scorecard real quick, you, you guys see what the final predictions were. Uh, so Hook did defeat Jack Perry uh, and became the new A. Well, yeah, I guess AEW FTW. I don't know FTW champion. They don't even put AEW in front of it. So he's the new FTW champion. It did not get retired as Jungle Boy or Jack Perry intended to do. Uh, so I got that one correct. Ashley, you too got that one correct. And Rick also got that correct. So we all picked Hook. Hook was victorious. We all got that. Uh, Adam Cole and MJF over Aussie Open as they went against them for the Ring of Honor tag team championships uh ashley she picked aussie open to retain the titles that was her Ooh. first loss oh my god i picked because i like the drama i picked because i wanted i thought that mjf and adam cole were gonna break up in the main uh, makes event. sense i thought no, they were gonna sense. stop being friends but i could i could see i see where you were going with that it's okay i get it i like that though that's so, that's, that's that's her first swerve pick it is and what, what she doesn't know is that what she wants to happen is bound to happen. It's just continuing mm -hmm. on. So mm -hmm. that's going to carry off into her <laughs> next prediction when it's time for them to defend those things. You just never know. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but uh, shout out to me and Rick. We both picked MJF and Adam Cole. The the uh, better than you, kangaroo baby. Kick. With that kangaroo <laughs> kick, baby, you know. <laughs> better than you, baby. Uh, better than you, baby. Uh, literally, we got that correct. So there was that. Uh, let's see. So with Osprey versus Chris Jericho, who cut one phenomenal promo that really sold us on this match. Uh, Osprey, the hometown kid, the person who is uh, deemed the best in the world, very debatable. Maybe we'll save that for a future debate on if we think he's the best wrestler in the world currently. I don't know. Let's see. You know, uh, he was victorious over Chris Jericho. Uh, so let's see. Looks like all three of us actually got that prediction correct. So yay us. We all got that correct as we kind of figured, right? Jericho's kind of on the Melted latter half. Cream. Yeah, he's kind of <laughs> it's kind of on the latter half of his career. It's kind of it's kind of expected. So going up into the next card, we had Sting and Darby in that casket match against Swerve and Christian. Ashley picked Sting and Darby. Rick also picked Sting and Darby, as did I pick Sting and Darby. So therefore, unfortunately, we all got that right because I really wanted to pick Swerve and, and company. But <laughs> so, yeah. something told me Swerve was going to take another L, and that's exactly what it did. But he makes the perfect villain. Shout out to Swerve, though. That guy really makes the perfect Killing villain it. right now. Um, so going into our trios match. No lie, we all got that correct. We all picked the acclaim. I don't know what made everybody pick the acclaim, so I'm actually curious on this one. What made you guys pick the acclaimed on your respective ends? Why wouldn't you? The acclaim. <laughs> They're so right now. They're so every, loved. Everybody loves their acclaim. Yeah. <laughs> fitting. That's fitting. That's fitting. I just didn't know, you know, because the House of Black, I mean, they're, they're pretty popular in their own right. Uh, you know, shout out to them. Um, if you guys didn't get to see, uh, they did a wonderful amazing yeah. Bray Wyatt tribute yeah. uh, in that stadium where it was thousands of people that was just over the top like reminded you of those Wrestlemania like entrances with Bray where you just saw the lights yeah. all over you know so yeah. um, and to and for Buddy to put that uh that lantern down on the ground they were dressed in all white it was like oh nice. man this is, this is sick you know what I'm saying yeah. so shout out to them for that um, but yes, we all got that right. The acclaimed it was victorious. They are the new AEW Trios champs. Now here comes the fun part. CM Punk versus yeah. Show for the real AEW championship. Now, we're going to get into this afterwards, but CM Punk, 
we all appeared to pick him in this match, which I actually know, Rick. This was your first loss because you picked Samoa <laughs> Joe. So, I just wanted Samoa Joe. I feel you. I, I can. I can. Yeah, I would have so, loved for him to win. Yeah, me, me too. I would have. So wait, you didn't have any drama aspects, Rick, in your pick? Was that just kind of like your? I mean, it a yeah. Personal pick, or was it like a? Swerve? It, was, it, was, it, was, it was a personal pick. I wanted Samoa Joe. I feel like that's good promo for uh, Twisted Metal, like I said last week. Um, <laughs> okay. and, and Samoa Joe is just a, he a beast all over. He a beast on the mic. He a beast in the ring. Like he, he's he's comedy. He's he's man. Come on. And that's CM Punk's it. just a, a cancer. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> you, sound, you sound like Seth. You sound like Seth over there, my guy. You sound like hey, Seth. Seth. Seth ain't lying. No lies sold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what, what did he say? He was like, "Keep your tail over there." <laughs> yeah. Well, stay where you at. So far, so good, y'all. He's hey. Stay where you at. <laughs> okay, so 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 shout out to me and Ash. We're the only two on that round to get that one correct. Uh, we're gonna make that a rule. I'm gonna, when we get into our payback uh, predictions, that will be a rule. Personal picks are allowed. So even if you know somebody will win, if you personally are a fan of the person up against this person, you're like, I personally want them to win. It's okay to go with that pick. You don't always have to. Yeah. What about being a smart hero where you're like, oh, yeah. my everybody. <laughs> he's not losing that type no like, yeah. pick who you want to win okay why don't yeah. you dream yeah yeah just dream <laughs> it's okay that's what makes these more fun you know what i'm saying okay so uh let's see after that we had let's see okay our fatal four-way picks uh that was a clean sweep on our ends as well i mean we all pretty much picked uh yeah we all pretty much picked uh Soraya to get that dub in the home town and she came out with the whole family so i guess that was yeah. pretty much right makes sense yeah it was they obvious that was the custom entrance yeah they gave yeah. her the dope entrance oh yeah the, yeah the they gave her the queen thing. yeah man <laughs> so we got that right uh looks like we also got the end possibly of their little stable too so that made things a little more interesting yeah. for us i was like hmm. soraya's mom sold like rent was due when she when, did. when tony accidentally hit her she was like oh yeah, I was like, the, the crowd was so invested <laughs> when, she, when she ate that. I was like, okay, oh, she, you sell better than your daughter do. I was like, God damn. <laughs> no tea, no shade, no tea. Just no saying, just, just, just saying, just saying. Still love Saray. I was just saying, you know, I mean, hey, <laughs> hey, you know. Uh, but let's see. Okay, so we got that right, and then uh, Young Bucks versus FTR for the AEW Tag Team Championships. Now, like I said, you two apparently, unfortunately, were disqualified from this very uh, one because you guys didn't get to pick. So this was me that I picked. And unfortunately for me, I would have been up 10 to 8. But I actually got this one wrong because I picked you the young botched, ones. You botched the easy layup. Yeah. I, I mean... <laughs> It was hard to call, though, because this was kind of one of those things where I'm like, it's almost rare to say one thing about AEW. If you don't notice, the elite almost never lose sometimes. They do, but sometimes, as Rick points out in this controversial fashion, they're WCW light, right? You, you call them a WCW uh, continuation. So the thing about it is the elite being, you know, the presidents and all that in the back, I'm thinking, okay, I guess the young bucks are going to go over here because after the stuff with Cash Wheeler, you know, the, the gun situation, I'm like, surely they're going to probably just drop these titles so that he can handle his business there and then maybe they'll revisit this if they want. But I just thought the young bucks were going to win. I was wrong. Yeah. It's cool. You know, it is what it is. I got it wrong. So I'm man enough to admit that one, but it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll, I'll, I still got the lead, so I'm going. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna Someone keep that. I'm, I'm, so, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna keep that one up. So botch to you, my friend, for actually skipping over that one because you probably would have tied with your boy. But it's cool. I, I actually looked up the the card list because I was going back and forth, and I I swear I didn't see it. I must have just overlooked it or whatever. Yeah, I completely blanked on that. I don't know what happened. It's all good. Yeah. And oh, that's, I know what, was it was it listed though? Like because yeah. I. 
Uh, it, was it was in there. Um, I have to go back through that text. It's not in my notes here, but it's in that text. It was it was in there because uh, you know, I just copied and pasted. I had to copy and paste myself. Uh, 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 <laughs> now y'all know I ain't gonna do y'all like that. Now. I ain't gonna do y'all like that. No way. I can't do y'all like that. But but it's all love though. That's why we laugh on it. Y'all see the vibe. But all right. So of course we had the BCC against the well Orange Cassidy and you know Penta and you know as you say uh, let's just say OC and friends Orange Cassidy and friends basically. Uh, this is another one that I got wrong because I really was kind of shocked that Orange Cassidy actually won this with his crew because it was random i was like why did they get the win I, bcc is the more over stable i for sure because that's like two losses for them in a row on like a stable on stable kind of thing because yeah. they lost that blood and guts to the elite so i'm thinking okay this is surely where they win get their win back but they lost so i was i was a little dumbfounded by that one i really didn't think they were gonna lose but uh, like I said, you guys, um, let me see, did, 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 did. Rick said Omega and friends, and that was because of the golden elite. So you guys also didn't have one for that one for some reason. That was weird. I was like, wait a minute. So that was actually two. No, I'm sorry. You did. Ashley got that right. Cause she said Eddie Santana and Ortiz. Okay. So yeah. wait, actually, no. So Ash, that was an error on my part because they were part of BCC. So you got that one wrong. Oh man. So that means <laughs> technically, <laughs> so technically I got to update the scorecard. So actually, Ashley is at bottom place right now with seven and yeah, Rick would be in second place while I'm in first. So I'm sorry, Ash, because Rick actually, you picked Let's see. Yeah, you picked Eddie Kingston and friends. So technically, that's the team Eddie Kingston was on was where Orange Cassidy and them were at. So you got that one right. Ashley got that one wrong. I don't know how I missed mm. that. I'm glad I just happened to go down. I don't know how I missed that one. I'm so sorry. I botched it, but it's it's correct now. It has been updated <laughs> on the scoreboard. All right. We're fair. We're fair over here. So, you know. <laughs> Ash, it's okay. We got payback for you to catch us. It's okay. You know, last place is only a motivation, baby. Yeah, so, nope. yeah I'll, I'll bounce back. I'll bounce back. Exactly. Everybody likes the underdog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, then you had, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's see which one I might have missed here. Uh, the Golden Elite. Yeah, the Golden Elite versus, uh, oh, goodness, the Bullet Club Gold. Uh, so, I was the only one to get that one right because for reasons y'all probably might have picked Kenny Omega squad is the reason why I just had a feeling. I was like, Bullet Club Gold is actually hot right now. They're gaining a lot of popularity on Collision for some reason. And it's like, I feel like the momentum is going to continue with these guys. So something told me, pick them. I don't know why, because everybody's going to pick Kenny Omega because I get it. The same reason I picked the get, I picked the Bucks. I just thought the elite was just gonna run the table today, and I was like, it was between this and that tag match where I was like, okay, the elite's not gonna win, not gonna lose two matches in one night. One of these they're gonna win, and one of these they're gonna lose. Turns out they lost both of them, <laughs> so so it was not a good <laughs> night for the elite. <laughs> the ultimate, the ultimate yeah. <laughs> It was it was not a, it was not a great night for the elite at all apparently so uh, but uh, I ended up getting that pick right while definitely unfortunately in Ash's case Ash got that wrong because she picked Kenny Hangman and Kuda Abushi and uh, Rick just put Omega in friends so I already knew what that was. <laughs> you know so you know. <laughs> I love how Rick does that. He's just like, I'm not naming those guys. Omega. I'm going with the name I know. Y'all know, yeah, y'all know. Uh, this, uh, <laughs> spring, spring roll, Talakashi, and all that. <laughs> okay, and then, of course, the final pick from this event was the main event with MJF, um, Adam Cole in the main event. And it looks like we all called this correctly, and we said MJF 
would be victorious. So that was a point for all of us across the board. Now, I am curious, what made you guys specifically so confident MJF was going to win this thing? Uh, we are talking about Adam Cole now. Adam Cole was a beast in the NXT days now. He, he was. He still, he still, he got to, he got to hit the gym. He playing too much Uno. He don't, he don't, he, really? man, he got Come on, gotta, Rick. You got to shape up. You gotta come, come on, with Rick. It. Come on, Rick. Come, with it. come on, man. Shawn Michaels you, you, wasn't always in the gym. Look at Shawn Michaels. Shawn, he was world champion. Shawn Michaels, uh, he was way better than Adam Cole. <laughs> Shawn Michaels better than Adam Cole right now. Damn, no. What? Oh, right Rick. now. Rick, that's a hot on, take, man. my guy. Right hey. now? Put, with put his up age? The put, up, put up the pictures. Oh my god. Side by side. Not pull up the side by side. We yeah. insert side insert side pictures side. here in this moment. Boom. Hey, right, there's a this. boom. <laughs> that, that's All a right. boom. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm gonna put a disclaimer up in this moment that the thoughts and opinions of the people in the live <laughs> crew are very opinionated and individual. So whatever is said, done, or mentioned on this show is not Tom to be Michael. taken personally. Pop look better than Adam Cole right now. Mm. Sean Michael's pop look better. You see? You see? Look at that. You see? Hey. And I like Adam take. Cole. I like Adam yeah. Cole. But he got to, he got to, okay. come on now. All right, all right. <laughs> you get, you get, you get getting paid, you getting paid to work out. You know that's, what I'm saying? That's fair. No, that's fair, bro. That's, that's fair. Bad. That's fair. Uh, okay. So, um, as we mentioned, we're going to carry on into our next segment. Like I said, that our prediction cards have been totaled. And as of mo- as of now, currently, like I said, as it sits, your boy is in first place with nine. Rick is in second with eight. And Ash is in bottom place at seven at the moment. Tune in to when we do our WWE payback prediction card later in the show. Uh, and, you know, you guys will then see exactly where we fare after payback. Now, with that, let's transition to, unfortunately, what happened for AEW All In. Uh, Real quick, very summarized thoughts. Was there anything about AEW All In that you guys enjoyed or thought was interesting as far as turnout, all that kind of stuff? Go ahead, Benny. So (laughs) for me, the, the women's match was way too short. Talk about it, Ash. Talk the women's it. the women's match was eight minutes. Eight minutes Damn. on like on that Damn. big on that big and long card. Eight minutes. Does that and include the entrances? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But that was like the biggest, that was the big conversation around like women, like on Twitter of people talking about how the match was literally only eight minutes. And then on top of that, there was another point I had, but Mercedes was in the crowd. They were showing Mercedes a lot for my Mercedes watch, for all my Mercedes Monet fans. A lot of people are speculating that once she comes back, when she's fully healed up and medically cleared, she could potentially be joining up or doing a couple of matches at AEW. I, I'm with it. I'm with it, to be honest. I'm with it, to be honest. I feel like, yeah, Mercedes is a big name. I feel like if anything, oh, that's what I was going to bring up because a lot of people were pointing it out in the press conference to Tony Khan and he kind of just like gave like a very, he gives like a very like blase answer every single time, basically being like, oh, well, in terms of viewership, the women's viewership is always down on the shows. He always like talks about the analytics and it's like, dude, you're supposed to make us care. Like, yeah. isn't that your whole entire point? Like, isn't that your whole entire yeah. job? But like, you're supposed to go, okay, the metrics are low in this hour. How can we bring it up? How can we make these storylines more interesting? Like, how can we make people more want to feel more involved? So that that's just my little my little women's wrestling rant for the week. You need to stop. Trying, you need to stop trying to make sense right now. You need go to ahead. chill out. No, no, go ahead. I, I like I like that. So okay, okay. I, I, I thank you, Ash. This is why we needed that female presence, and this is why we brought her home, y'all. This is why we made her part of the crew because y'all ladies' voices matter, man. This is what we need. We need that that rant. And aggression, you know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. just, that's, mm-hmm. Me and Rick can kind of voice it, but not like you ladies can, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all yeah. represent because y'all, y'all part of that, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, respect to Ash in that opinion. Y'all, y'all respect them. <laughs> AEW, respect your women's division, man. Literally, respect your women's division. 
Stop Give the Divas a tap. Yeah. Give the Divas a tap. Hey, hey, WWE, you ain't out the books either. You know, we need that that's main that. roster women's division to kick it up yeah. a nice two dog. Yeah. 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 yeah, all y'all. Y'all see for my botch of the week pick. Yeah, well, we're going to get to that. So, Rick, <laughs> good sir. Uh, how about you, man? Anything stood out from what you got to see? I know you're not the biggest AEW uh, watcher, but with what you saw. I like the little, uh, the little uh, MJF, Adam Cole, throwing a chair back and forth. A little, I saw that little spot. <laughs> or uh, MJF throwing the belt at him. Like, you want it, you can have it. And then just finish it. You know, mm. like, it, was, it, was, it was decent. Okay. But then... We can talk about the little backstage stuff uh, later. <laughs> okay. Yes, we're going we're to get right into that. That's actually going to be our next thing. I just had to briefly ask you guys. Uh, for me, it's more, I did enjoy the uh, Chris Jericho and Osprey match for what it was. Uh, you know, I mean, when Jericho decides to turn up, he can. And uh, mm-hmm. he, he made it work for what it was, given his age and all that good stuff. But uh, for me, it was probably mostly just the, the presentation of AEW was definitely on point to me. Uh, you know, more so like just the production felt better in terms of, you know, I heard the music in clear because that used to be my biggest beef, beef and gripe with AEW. I can barely hear your music, bro. But I heard it loud and clear. I heard the crowd loud and clear. Everything just looked and sound aesthetically pleasing with the show so i will say it gets a major thumbs up commentary was great everything was just pretty much solid you know what i mean and the in-ring presentation like i said there were some matches that was kind of like all right you know cool for what it was but uh yeah i think i think it stood out really well and of course the stadium stampede spot as we mentioned uh when we talked about this off air rick uh <laughs> those oh, yeah. skewers the john moxley boy well, Renee well, Paquette. Well, Renee Podcat, man, if you don't follow her on Twitter, I swear you need to literally follow her Twitter and notify it every time there's a John Moxley hardcore match, okay? Because believe you me, <laughs> that woman is having another kid at some point with the way he is just putting his body through stuff where it's like, oh my God, mm-hmm. how does she do it? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, just the, the, the chunk of meat that just came on the top of, like, oh, when it, yeah. Uh, like I have to watch his matches like this. Like I cannot watch his. I cannot watch his matches. Like <laughs> my, my prayers are with John Moxley as he gets older in life, man. Just man, look, I'm glad you're wrestling your style, but please, please make sure you're able to walk. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we'll talk about that later on with a certain legend wrestler. I don't know if y'all heard uh, how he's opened up on how he feels, but we'll talk about that. Um, but uh, CM Punk. Speaking of talking, <laughs> uh, let's just put it this way. It's amazing to me how the show is got nothing but positivity, you know, positivity from start to finish. But the one time, every time AEW does something here, there's always a certain CM Punk thing that brings <laughs> it down to here. And yeah. Once again, he strikes again. First, it was brawl out. You know that was a phenomenal show that day too. And then what did he do? <sighs> Killed all the positivity on that yeah. show. conversation because yeah. then it became the CM Punk show. All after that, scuffles, yeah. arguments, rants on a post media scrum next to your own boss who looked like a oh. complete deer in headlights. Now. <laughs> We get this report that literally during the show, shout out to Ash Benny, who was very on the money and sent that into our group chat because I remember seeing that and saying, oh God, here we go again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was reported from Fightful and, and so many other anonymous sources out there in wrestling that CM Punk literally got into a scuffle with none other than Jungle Man, Jungle Boy, Jack Perry. Why, ladies and gentlemen? All because this man had his match literally before. He was on the pre-show, so he closed out the pre-show with his match, his FTW Championship match against Hook. They did a spot. You know, he arrived in his entrance on this, not necessarily stretch limo. It was more of a six-door limo, which kind of got a nice little pun. 
But he does a little RVD salute tribute, Rolling Thunder on the top of the car, which did look nice, not going to lie. Did it right on top of Hook, right just on the hood. And then he proceeds to just kind of, you know, mock the crowd a little bit. And then he knocks on that glass of the uh, actual windshield. And he's like, you see this right here? You see this? And he reports, I quote you not. This man literally says, real glass. Cry me mm-hmm. a river. And ladies and gentlemen, that was all just a knockout reports in the past from the previous week that CM Punk kind of just tried to keep him from doing a spot on real glass, trying to be a veteran, trying to just be like, no, you shouldn't do that. And he just was like, bump that. I'm doing it on real glass. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it remains to be seen when it comes to this specific situation. Now, it's told that Jack Perry is very good friends with the elite. So obviously with him not getting along with them, he very much is on their side. He's team elite. Uh, So anytime CM Punk's getting into it, in his mind, he's already kind of checked out. So I'm like, I don't know whose side to take because CM Punk has the reputation here that's just continuing to follow him. But it's it's Mm -hmm. almost like you point fingers at both sides here. So you guys think on on this these reports and thoughts where, where, where are y'all at with this right now since i'm the oh. since i'm the aw uh casual i guess you could say mm-hmm. um there was two reports right cm mm-hmm. punk uh got bumped into and then choked him out or something and then there was i don't know which side said which but if anybody's seen any of uh, UFC, CM Punk history, CM Punk ain't fighting no damn body. CM Punk is not fighting no damn body. He getting his, <laughs> he getting his tail whooped. I don't care by who. He can't fight. <laughs> Zero. You Zero. can't. But well, baby, Jack you, Perry, you can't Jack, fight. Jack, <laughs> yeah, Jack, Jack Perry would probably put pawns on him. So let's 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 just leave it at that. Like. Even watching the documentary when he was training for UFC, he acted like he never took a bump in his life. He was terrified to eat a takedown. Oh, no. Like, shook. <laughs> Wait, are we sure that even Jack Perry can fight? Because, I mean, homeboy was raised in Hollywood. I mean, he's kind of like a entire actor's for, son. For CM Punk to be raised in Chicago and fight the way he fights, I'm pretty sure it's Jack possible, Perry yeah. can put pause on him. <laughs> yeah, fair. That's fair. No, that's fair. Anything is possible. <laughs> yes, actually, anything is possible. So, uh, okay. So, all right, we're going to do a little segment here. I want, I want, I want, I want, um, <clears throat> uh, Rick, you be CM Punk. I'm going to be Jack Perry. <laughs> <laughs> and Ash, you're going to be like, since they said Tony Khan was back there with Samoa Joe and CM Punk doing this Didn't all the thing. TV monitors fall on him or something? Uh, yeah, <laughs> supposedly. You're going you're, you're gonna to be our, 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 our residential Tony Khan. Now, Tony Khan, for the record, has never looked so good, so I just want to make that very known, people. All right, Tony Khan <laughs> wish. Yeah. He yeah. wishes he could look that good, okay? She got to get her eyes as big as possible. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I was about to say, I was about to, I was about to get it. <laughs> but, I'm but, I'm but, I'm I'm got to but, 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 you feel me? Goodness gracious. So we're going to reenact this whole thing of what we probably feel because there's always two sides of the story. So what we're going to do for y'all, now if you're in the audio <laughs> format, you just gotta listen, but if you guys are watching this, then you get to listen and watch this. So we're gonna use, use your imagination. <laughs> we're gonna reenact this in our way of how we think this thing turned out. So <laughs> and scene. <clears throat> well, coming backstage. <laughs> so yeah, how about that match, man? Came through. Y'all saw it? Yeah, I lost it. I tapped out. But like I said, real glass. Hey, see a pump. Cry me a river. I work with children. Why are you being so mean to me? <laughs> mean to you? Why? What's your What's your deal, old man? You want to come through here and you want to try to tell us what to do? This is the biggest show of my life right now. Here you are trying to be grumpy old CM Punk coming up in here telling me what to do and not to hide. You saw I took a bump on there. Do you see any blood and scratches on me? I came out okay. 
Tony, take him off my show. Get him off Collision. <laughs> get me off Collision? How dare you try to get me off the, get me off? No, you don't take me off a of Collision. I'll take you off a of Collision. I don't care if they think you're some kind of troll. You're just a sorry old man to me. Damn. <laughs> he got him bad. <laughs> Yeah, I can feel bad. <laughs> Cancer always wins. <laughs> Tony, Tony, get this <laughs> light away. That's all he does. Look back and forth. He, that man always just looks lost. Uh, just just looking lost. Like, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, in most cases, uh. that is a scene. Ladies and gentlemen, that's that's about how we can do it as best as we can. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how we feel this thing turned out. But <laughs> given this, what do y'all think is the real story in all honesty? Do you really think any of those two stories were really true? Or do you think it's just like kind of like brawl out? Like, yeah, I guess we gotta figure out the what truth happened? between two I mean, sides. With with all the lies, there's gotta be some truth in it. Yeah, I think somewhere in the middle is the is the true story. Somewhere in the middle is the true story. Well, well, here's a thought, ladies and gentlemen. It's official, and this is by reports of yours truly, Dwayne Dickey, the highlight reel. Reports have come. My sources have told me it is official. The dog known as Larry was not involved in this in total <laughs> affair. Oh, okay. okay. So well, Larry that's my favorite detail of brawl out. <laughs> Larry, Larry the dog is safe. He's recovered from his previous injuries. He had nothing to do with this scuffle. Okay. It is official. Ladies and gentlemen, that is breaking news as of right now here on the Life of Botch podcast. You heard it here first. Good to know. Yes. Good to as know. long as Larry is safe, I'm good. Yeah. As long as Larry's good, I'm good. <laughs> that's it. That's it, man. So, uh, yeah, the only thing left to really say here is, uh, man, look, punk. You're a grown Stop. man, my guy. Like, Stop. I mean, yo, Stop. I got your flag Stop. back here. I bought your flag because I was just excited because of the fact Aww. that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was never the biggest, biggest CM Punk fan, but I bought this because it was like, yo, that's what's up. We finna see that was like, a you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah, it was just like, yo, let's, let's, let's do this. You know what I'm saying? This was a nice present. I was like, yeah. I put it up here like, yeah, we finna, you know, but this dude has just made me even embarrassed to have this dog and flag up, man. I'm like, dead. Bro. Oh. What, do you, what do you guys think of the other reports coming out where, like, they're saying that CM Punk is, like, severely unhappy with the company. He mm -hmm. wasn't formally told that he was suspended. He found out through, like, his lawyers, Tony Khan, yeah. and, like, tell yeah. him personally. And, like, even for, like, his transportation from, like, Heathrow Airport, they're saying that, like, he had, like, no travel arrangements. <laughs> so there's, like, videos, <laughs> pictures of him, like, with fans on the tube just being like, yep, that's me. Like, on my way to All In, just like you guys. <laughs> big man, big man. Yeah, big man. just oh. terrible. Just and terrible. Apparently, apparently, adding to those reports, he quote-unquote hates AEW. Yep, uh, I heard that one. Apparently mm -hmm. has quit AEW. Heard that one. Heard that one. And I'm like, okay, well, this is a bit dramatic and much, but hey, my guy, if this is, this is also very you, so you know what? Mm -hmm. yeah. WWE don't look so bad now, do they? You know? Mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. WWE? No, but it's more like <laughs> when you look at how that situation was handled from them back. They did the they did him Max. so wrong. CM Punk is a little angel. Yeah, yeah, like like he was just all the one that was done wrong by WWE. But apparently, as you can see, WWE since 2013 and 14 have moved on. They've had bigger stars. Mm-hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if Roman Reigns or anybody in the top right now tried to pull what CM Punk tried to pull back then, they'd say, okay, see ya. We're going to yeah. build somebody else up to this point. And they yep. would get there. So, yeah. so no one man or woman is bigger than a company. And AEW, yeah. unfortunately, has not realized that yet. I don't know why <laughs> you hold on to your toxic relationship because it's a draw. Okay? Play. Play what? WCW games, win WCW prizes. <laughs> Ash, tell me, as, as the woman here, as the woman here, if something is toxic, do you really hold on to it? Do you? If, even if it's bringing you the it. best thing, you don't, right? So I'm not no. tripping. You're supposed to just let, you cut but, that thing cold off. 
Yeah, you gotta cut it. You gotta cut it off. You gotta cut the cancer. But here's the thing: from Tony, Ca- from Tony Khan's perspective, mm-hmm. I do get it because they essentially made Collision to be around CM Punk. Like they invested a lot of energy and time mm-hmm. into like his branding and overall his overall association with like AEW now. So I feel like it's like he's kind of just like we're all we're all in. So, it's cheaper to cheaper. It's cheaper yeah. to cheaper. Just ride it, ride it till the wheels fall off. Yeah, ride it oh till the wheels God. fall off. Ride that it till that a... contract expires. Ride that thing out. And this is exactly why I refer to this man as CM Rogers. For my Green Bay Packers out out there, this is exactly equivalent to what I've experienced. And what, yeah, yeah, you know, Green Bay yeah. Packers fans are happy. They're, they got Jordan Love now. That That is gone. That's a New York hey. Jets problem now, right? <laughs> Did you see my post, though? We got a bar that gives free drinks every time the Jets lose. <laughs> <That's> so funny. <laughs> there you go. So we win. We, when the Jets lose, we win. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that, baby. That's You can't ask for That's nothing better. So with that, um, you know, again, AEW, figure that out, do better, get better, please. It's for the sake of all of wrestling. So with that, uh, we got a pay-per-view coming up, another one. Actually, now that I think about it, y'all, I'm sorry. We have two pay-per-views coming up in this week. Because yeah. I forgot we got all out, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. In the midst of this drama, yeah. we have all out right after all in. But we yeah. also have WWE Payback. Now, all out. I'm probably gonna have to text you guys once they figure out what the heck their card is gonna be because they're for whatever reason. Tony Khan apparently also wants to do this again next year. So he wants to literally do Wembley again next year. That's already official. But he also wants to do this back to back thing. He thinks that the from what I've heard, he uh appears to say that this Labor Day weekend thing is 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 working. And he doesn't even have the metrics for this yet. So apparently he wants to go ahead and do this back-to-back pay-per-view thing going into next year. So next year we have the same issue of all in with all out right behind it. Yeah. Last time I remember the original AEW from the start, they went from having four pay-per-views that were spread out months in between. How this turned into a back-to-back thing these days, I don't know. Sounds very WWE-ish, but okay, yeah. cool. If it works, if you like it, I love it, Tony. If you like it, I love yeah. it. Uh, so with Payback, let's go ahead and just uh, talk about, we got a, a card of about six matches total so far. Uh, mm-hmm. Could possibly have an extra match. If so, I'll text you guys whatever they decide the last minute add, but I'm pretty sure this is all we're dealing with leading into this pay-per-view on September the 2nd. So we've got Seth freaking Rollins defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Shinsuke Nakamura. We've got Becky Lynch, the man, taking on Trish Stratus. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where Ash is going to give her a nice uh, <laughs> deep sigh because it's finally over. So yeah. <laughs> In this moment, going against Trish Stratus in a steel yeah. cage where no yeah. one can interfere because that's always stopped people before. Yeah, facts, facts. Zoe going to find a way in. Uh, then we have, <laughs> let's see, another women's match. So that's two Ash, two out of the six. They're, yeah. they're doing better. Yeah. Eight yeah. minutes total. Yeah, eight <laughs> minutes each. <laughs> you got to put a timer on both matches. We got Sammy and KO defending their undisputed WWE tag team titles against Finn Balor and Damian Priest, the Judgment Day, in a Steel City street fight match. Now, for those who are wondering, what's the Steel City? Well, as you know, they're in Pittsburgh for this pay-per-view, and Pittsburgh is known for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they're known as the Steel City. Therefore, enough said. It's a Pittsburgh street fight, pretty much, y'all. So this and see how that turns out. Rey Mysterio, the OG, defending the United States Championship in a rematch against Austin Theory. And then, of course, probably my favorite match out of all of these because of the feud and how fun it's been. We've got 
the most must-see WWE superstar of all time in the Miz versus the megastar. With everybody saying, L.A. Knight. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, with <laughs> that, real quick going down the line, I got to know, and I'm going to tally this thing really, really, really quickly. Um, so let me go ahead and just put everybody's names here. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do that right quick. And I has got to know who you guys have for each match. So okay. starting from bottom up to the top, like I said, there's no particular order. So I'm just going to scroll from the bottom up to the top. Starting with LA Knight versus The Miz. Who are you guys taking to basically get the dub in this match? I think that's easy money. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's a universal for LA Knight. All right. That's a round mm -hmm. table discussion. Okay. I like that. Safe to say we all know who we're rooting for on that one. So, okay. We got yeah. LA Knight all across the board. Next up, let's see here. Next up, we got Rey Mysterio defending his United States Championship versus Austin Theory. Who you guys got taking the win on this one? Ray Mysterio. Ray Mysterio. Going right. I'm gonna go Austin. They're gonna really? pad his little they gonna pad his little title. Oh god, please, no more. Ray, Ray <laughs> just hanging Ray just hanging around. He ain't doing nothing. Yeah, but I feel like they're kind of setting something up with Santos to take the belt, to take the belt for okay. me. Some type of passing of the torch moment. Okay. Okay, I like that. We got a split decision, our first split decision. So that makes me kind of a tiebreaker and I'm up top. So I got to choose wisely. But you know what? I got to go with Rick on this one. I'm actually going to take Austin Theory to take the dub for this. But I'm I'm, I'm doing it for opposite reasons. A town. You're doing it for A town. That's why. Oh, no. No, no. No, no. Damn. I'm actually. <laughs> Bump that, because that guy is <laughs> not from Atlanta. He is from McDonough. There's a difference. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm actually choosing Ray Mysterio. I'm choosing Austin Theory to win in spite of Santos, because I feel like Santos um... is going to start the trend of dissension for the LWO, where he either oh. costs Ray Mysterio the title, Mm -hmm. And that sets up that feud, which then allows him to eventually get a shot at that title. Oh, um, okay, okay, okay. So that's why I'm going to go. So I, I like your reasoning, Ashley. I like your reasoning, Rick. So my reason is I'm picking Austin Theory because of the fact that Santos will cost him that championship. So okay, okay. that is two for Austin Theory on that one. I love it, y'all. This is why I love these predictions because they... You just never know where we're going to go with these things, whether it's a personal pick, mm -hmm. a swerve pick. That's kind of what mine's was just now. It's a swerve pick. You know, it's a swerve pick. That's my swerve pick. So <laughs> um, next up, we got the Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships. Speaking of swerves, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus Damian Priest and Finn Balor in a Steel City Street fight for the tag titles. Who y'all got on this one? Judgment Day. Yep. I think I think Judgment I Day taking it. I think Judgment. I think judgment I agree. Day. I agree. Okay. And I, I think it's gonna be like uh 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 Finn and um Damien like arguing and they on an uh, accidental win type thing. Yeah, it's gotta like be something with off. that briefcase. Yeah, like <laughs> something something where they 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 fumbling and bumbling and they still end up with the dub. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So uh you know or McDonough what? helps. McDonough finally gets put into the judgment day. Uh-huh. That could work too. I like that, Ash. I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna also just go ahead and go around the table and say judgment day because based off how Rhea set this up on Monday with uh claiming, hey, you got either judgment day is gonna walk out with all the gold or there's gonna be some changes around here. So it's setting you up either way for something. So that either yeah. means they lose and we get a whole turn or they win and it delays the turn for now. So yeah, we're going to say they're going to have their evolution moment where they uh, all win the championships and they're uh, 
at the all end, the standing with all the gold. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're too hot right now to break up. Yeah, got to do it. Especially, especially. Uh, remember, they're, they're supposedly the successors of the bloodline, so they stay. exactly. So there's that yeah. as well, right? This, yeah. if that's the case, this would be that moment. Otherwise, that's kind of a dud of a report. So yeah. <laughs> so, fact, fact. all right. So next up, we've got. Oh, before I even say that, one one final thought regarding Ko and Sammy. If this is it for them. What are y'all thoughts on based off how things went from the bloodline storyline, the WrestleMania match to this point? I, was there a championship run together? A dud? Was it so so? Where are you, what's y'all opinions on that run if this is it for them? It was a bit of a dud, but it's not their fault. Yeah. It was a bit of a dud, it, but it's not their fault. Okay. They rode real high and then it fizzled out. Yeah, they, they, but it's also like, how can you follow up what Jimmy and Jay did with those exactly. belts? You know what I'm exactly. saying? Like they made those belts feel so important to the point where they main evented a WrestleMania, which yeah. is unheard of for a tag team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it's hard to follow up. It's hard to follow up that type of expectation. Also, I hope when Judgment Day win, um, they combine them belts, make it one belt, get get us a new design, give us a purple belt. Like, yeah. Yes. Give us a oh, kind of like the cruiserweight belt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she wants she wants that cruiserweight belt back. That's yeah. what she wants. Okay, I, I see you, Ash. I, you, you secretly love that title. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay, but oh yeah, like, hopefully don't, we get. A don't sleep. Time. Don't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> My boy, he know. He know. Okay, so uh, going up to our next match, uh, prediction wise for payback. We've got another championship match. Uh, shout out to the fact that we have pretty much all the championships mostly being defended on this show. Uh, yeah. Rhea Ripley versus Raquel Rodriguez for the women's world title. Hi. Mommy. Mommy. <laughs> Rhea's bringing it home. Monday night, mommy. Yep. Yeah, you know, if this was any other circumstance, Raquel's the one to take it from her. It just ain't right now. She still ain't ready. She still ain't yeah. ready. I want Liv to be the one to take it from her. I really want Liv to be the one to take it from her. But... It sounds like that's where it's heading. I'm hearing a lot of people say they want Liv to do it now all of a sudden. So I'm like, okay, well. I just feel like after like they broke up, then they had like that feud with like uh, where she was, they were like in the newly formed like Bullet Club or whatever they did with AJ Styles and Liv for mm-hmm. a little bit and Finn mm-hmm. for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then they had like the, they were both the longest people in the royal rumble this past mm-hmm. year they just have like a lot of history she's the one Rhea's the one who injured her and took her out mm-hmm. so i feel like they kind of like like lives trajectory and momentum is super high for when she comes back i love that i love I feel that. like she's primed to take that belt she's definitely ready for another run and we can tell so mm-hmm. I, I like that i like that so speaking of the ladies we're going to take it into another match that is not a title match but it is definitely a feud that is that we hope finally coming to an are, end. Are, are you picking mommy though? Are you picking mommy too? I am gonna pick mommy. I think it's very universal. Right, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, it, we gotta it, get these six. It makes we gotta sense. Get these six it, down. it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense because I mean, why would I not pick her? I mean, yeah. it's, that would be stupid for me to just say what I said on my last pick. And then, yeah. oh yeah, mommy's totally losing. No, no, she's, she's not. <laughs> yeah. she's not yet. It's not. And time. Raquel just doesn't have a character yet. She no. Raquel just no. doesn't have something that. She doesn't have that, that, I don't know, that main event, like, she obviously has that main event quality, but I just don't think that she has, like, that whatever it factor is needed to excel her, she doesn't have it yet. As Do you boy, think that's uh, why Braun got rid of her ass? That's a low <laughs> point, Rick. Why'd you do that, bro? Why'd yeah. you do that? Uh, Braun, already, Braun already got a new one. He out oh, here. You know what I'm saying? Damn, I, I saw that, too. I saw that, too. <laughs> Braun already out here. Hey, Ash, how, how, how you feel about Braun doing that? Woman to woman, woman on that one. You, you, you like that move, or you like, bro, that was dirty, bro. Why would you do that? Here's the thing. I didn't even really, like, like them together. So when it happened, I was like, everything happens for a reason. Reason, you feel me everything happens for a reason <laughs> <laughs> okay. i was like what's best for business it's best what's for best? business Ooh. Hey, hey, cut throw, cut throw. okay okay i see you i see you i like that all right okay so um let's see here 
Going into our next match uh, for Payback, we got Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus in a steel cage match. All right. Who's 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 finally catching the dub here? Because lately it's been where, where, where are we going on this? Uh Becky like it's gotta be Becky to end it, it's right? Gotta, it's, gotta, it's gotta be Becky. It's gotta be Becky to end it. That I love the, it. I love if Trish went over, but it's gotta be Becky. Yeah, like the match they had on Monday, honestly, like the false count anywhere with Zoe and Becky, that mm-hmm. was leaps and bounds better than what we saw <laughs> better than what we saw a couple weeks ago like that yes. spot when at when they were all fighting and then zoe accidentally hit back um hit trish and they all fell yeah. over and it's just that great yeah. shot of them and zoe they, and they were both looking like, sure. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i was like okay i'm ready for the steel cage match i'm ready for the steel cage match okay all right so that sounds like a becky all across the board here becky, right? yeah. Yeah. Becky. Yeah. Yeah. okay so Becky for the win on that one to finally end this feud and we will see what is next for Becky because I'm sure Trish will fly off into her sunset, do her thing for a while, be gone, and you know, we'll see her when we'll see her kind of thing. Yeah. So, all right. So uh, I'm assuming this one will likely be the main event if it's not Becky and Trish or LA Knight. And Miz. I don't know. It's kind of tough to tell how they're going to be. I'm yeah. assuming this will be the main event because it's supposed to be the second place best title next exactly. to the, you know, undisputed ones. But um, Either this or I would say it would open it. Oh, God. That would be such a downgrade for this title if it opens the show. I would be like, yeah. man, why, why? This is supposed to be your second best title. It's yeah. got to be sets main the tone, event. Though. Opener sets the tone, though. Yeah, if, 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 it, if, it, open, if it opens strong, it, it could be nice. Think, think about it, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, if yeah, to have the Miz it, and LA Knight close would be kind of wild. Like, there's not even wild. a title in that. <laughs> there's not even a that, title. <laughs> that, would, that would be that would be the push that everybody's thirsty for LA Knight, though. Like, that is political. It, it, yeah. it, it does, it does and, elevate. And it's a filler pay-per-view anyway, so. We'll see. Yeah. I still don't think it's a good look for that main event not being your heavyweight championship. I, that's, I feel what you're saying, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, so Seth freaking Rollins defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Shinsuke Nakamura for the championship. Who we going with on this one, family? Uh, who is taking home the title from Pitts- in Pittsburgh? It's Seth. Seth taking that home. Hey. You think? You don't, you, you don't think? I, I, I'm riding with Shinsuke. I like ruthless Shinsuke. Okay, I like okay, okay. I like Ruth like Shinsuke too. I like, as I like long as he Shinsuke. ain't doing that AJ Styles feud stuff where everything is a low blow, we good. Like, yeah, like, please. Uh, that low blow stuff was trash sandwich. <laughs> I think they finally realized that was different booking back then. Okay, this is a triple yeah. H version. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. two oh. different versions. Yeah. And you can and you can definitely tell. You can definitely tell. Yeah, you can definitely tell. Mm-hmm. Big improvement. I gotta go you got a tiebreaker. You got a tiebreaker. I am. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. Y'all put me in a corner on this one. I'm torn, bro. Cause... If they didn't give it to Finn after the seven-year arc, yeah, Seth's holding on to that belt a little longer. That's, that's the part that kind of does help this decision a bit because I'm like, okay, well, if but Finn, Finn, Finn didn't got get other it. Stuff, Finn got other stuff going on, though, Cooking, with the judges, yeah. too. You know what I'm saying? So he got, he got a bunch of pots on the stove. Yeah, been true, chill. True. Been chill. <laughs> it's Shinsuke's time. You know what? I am. <laughs> oh God! Okay, so, we got him stuck. We got him stuck, stuck man. Yeah, yeah I'm stuck. It's hard, this, it's, this one's a hard one. This is a hard, hard one. one. It's a hard one. Cause... Especially, especially with uh, Seth talking about his back, he might want to take a little, take a little breather. Yeah. You know. I know about your back. <laughs> <laughs> Right, if I'm not mistaken, they did mention Seth's had some injuries he's been battling. So it's kind of for years. Yeah, so I'm like, Long time. Hmm. that's like when John Cena had the, that football on his elbow, and he was yeah. Still... Sammy had it a couple weeks back. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, how long has Seth had this title now, y'all? He's had this title since what was that? What? That was Saudi yeah, Arabia, well, right? So, yeah, yeah. When did they do well, that? They did that before Rumble. I think right? that was late May, right? That was like late May, right? 
think it was. I have to double check to make sure. Because so I, I believe it was it, after Backlash. That sounds about right. Yeah, because yeah, no he, he had it for a half second. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm taking a long shot here, but I I have to go with Rick, man. I think Shinsuke okay, okay. Nakamura. This might cost me my lead. But I'm, so, so, <laughs> I, I hope mean, I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I love Shinsuke. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Seth, Seth, he held the title. He made it. He made it prestigious already. Mm -hmm. He defended it more it. times than he defended it more times than Roman has defended his title in his whole reign. Not too much. Not too much. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, so he man. did. He did. What, he did what he needed to do. He can take a little breather, you know. Yeah, facts. Yeah, I think, um, especially, especially given what's probably going on with Wyndham, he might drop the title to, you know, just I don't know, maybe the heel a little mental bit, health. like you said, yeah. mental health, physical health, kind of pull a Bianca, which we'll get into uh, very shortly. But uh, I think this is a. <laughs> I think this is where I'm, like I said, I hope to God this does not cost me my lead. <laughs> I'm gonna this go is about to solidify day. mine. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad. Maybe a little bit, but I wouldn't even be mad. I'm like, okay, we got the queen on top. I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> all right. So um, that does it for our prediction side of things. Under All of this has been under what's cooking. So we'll be right back after a brief little quick short message and y'all stay tuned and keep it locked with us all right y'all welcome back man we are in the fourth quarter segment of the show uh this right here is where i turn it over to miss ash and she's just gonna talk to the ladies out there a little bit about what's been going on in the world of women's wrestling for y'all and keep it locked so ash go ahead and take this thing over real quick so first, I would like to talk about Ava, Ava Rain's debut, The Rock's daughter. It was a pretty short match, but she did her thing. She, I like how she, there's kind of having her be more like a power, like a more powerful player, as opposed to kind of just being more te technical, which is kind of thought I thought where they were going. But she held her own against Ivy. It was a pretty good debut. I enjoyed it. Um. A faction that I've been loving right now and that I can't wait and for them to be in 2K24 is Metaphor. Let's go, baby. Okay, I love Let's them. Go. I love them down. They're on NXT. Hey. It's got Jakara, Jakara Jackson, mm -hmm. Miss Jackson, uh, Miss Jackson the Distraction, as Trick Williams coined her, Lash Legend, Gnome Dar, and then what is what is the name of the last guy? Uh, that would be, uh, oh goodness, Mensa. 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 Uh, yes, yes, Mensa. Super talented. I feel like they've all just kind of been on the card doing their own thing, holding their own. And then they had the brilliant idea to bring them all together. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's been really working well for them, especially Jakar and Lash. Yes. All of their shenanigans in the matches. They've been killing it. They've been killing please, it. Please, future, future tag team champions, please. Need I it, need please. that. I need yeah, it, it, baby. I need, I need that. It. Let's go. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay what else been going on for the ladies out here ash all right and then the last big one that i really want to touch on is impact emergence trinity had um i believe like her second or third big defense against diana perrazzo defeated her she had on like the all white all white when she feeling godly gear on she yeah. was rocking canada she had like this really dope like spray painted like maple leaf in her wig it okay. was sick it was sick yeah it was mm -hmm. sick she hit the code red and then did this really dope transition into Starstruck, her, her submission finisher, mm -hmm. got Deanna to tap. So yeah. I've been really enjoying. Yeah. And then and then Gail Kim came out. They did like a little side-by-side -side moment at the end to end the show. Main event as well. So I was like giving the women their dues. I, uh -huh. I really like that. I really like that. So. You know, you don't <laughs> think it's possible Miss Kim could possibly come out of retirement. I don't know. Day. I would love it. I would love it. Yeah. I'm waiting on Mickey. I've been waiting on Mickey for for Trinity. Is that's, that I feel like? Is the, would you say that's our next watch? Given what we've gotten with Mercedes uh, update lately, Mickey Mickey watch. 
Are we on Mickey Watch now? Yeah, maybe and uh, maybe a Mickey Watch, maybe a Mickey Watch. Yeah. <laughs> I think that should be a regular thing for you now, Ash. Like yeah. we find that name. once we we just put a radar, be like, okay, we're you know, like I don't know, we got to call it the Ash Star or something. I don't yeah. know. Like, okay, we got we got we had our Mercedes watch. Next thing you know, oh wow, look who's in the in the crowd at all in. Oh, right. God. She hit it on the nail. That popped me, said. and then plus. Mercedes got a huge pop at All In too, so I was like, "Mind you, she's just sitting down." I was like, "Such a goat, yeah. such yeah. a goat!" Like, yeah. did, you, did, did, you, did you like how she uh, participated in the uh, scissor me party? Yeah, you know? when they cut to her, she was like, <laughs> "I was like, period, period, period." period. Okay, okay, I rock with it. I rock with it. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make yeah, that's a new thing for you, Ash. Write that one down. That's your Ash star. Okay, we're gonna okay, we're gonna down. every woman we're out there looking for. You keep watch to see if we're going to see them appear somewhere, okay? So, yeah, um, I need them. One thing I want to ask you about that noted me, uh, you know, I know this is going to make our boy Rick very, very, very sad, but uh, <laughs> let's talk <laughs> about our queen out there, uh, Bianca Belair, taking some time Take, Taking a break. Ugh. And yeah, I, I got to... I got I got a show coming up. I got a show coming up. She got to be there. Yeah. So, so I'm like, Dang. man, bro. I, so, so I got Ash, my fingers crossed. They said a couple weeks or a couple months. Or a couple that, months. That's, that's, that, that's what hurts me. Yeah. yeah let's, for your sake, Rick, let's hope it's only a couple weeks. Yeah, facts. Let's hope it's only a couple <laughs> weeks for you. For you, for you. <laughs> but I, I have to I have to ask you, Ash. Um, given that this is the Ash Corner right now, I need to know. Uh, how do you feel? Like, who steps up? Uh, with her in her absence. Uh, how do you feel about her absence? Is it well deserved? Is it is it kind of one of those things where you're like, man, we're gonna really miss her? Like, where are you at knowing this news about Bianca? Uh, it really sucks. It really sucks because I feel like the division right now more than ever really needs her. Just because I feel like in terms of like characters, we don't really like Liv is gone for a little bit. Rhea has been holding her own, but Rhea hasn't really been interacting too much with the women. In the past couple of weeks, she has been, but overall her reign, it hasn't been really giving too much women interaction. So I feel like Bianca has been kind of just like the one consistent in the women's division for like the past like three years now. It's like really crazy when you think about it. Like she's held it down for three manias at this point back to back wins at three different manias so while like i'm super sad about it it's deserved it's so deserved she needs that time off yeah she she 100 needs that time off and plus um i feel like it's good to let us miss her yeah. You know, Definitely. I feel like if we have like a pay-per-view or like a survivor series in a couple of like in a couple months from now and like we do war games again and somebody goes like, oh, you know who would have been perfect in that match? What what, mm-hmm. what glue was missing to put this all together? Bianca, you know, it, it makes the people miss her and make the people realize because I feel like a lot of people have been playing on Bianca's name on yeah. social media lately. Tell like, her. When people like. When she and like when the announcements came out that she was being essentially being written off TV, people were like, "Oh, thank God!" Blah blah blah. And I'm like, "You're gonna miss her okay in two three yep. weeks, okay? You're yep. gonna miss her. There's gonna be a Bianca sized hole in that women's yep. division because she brings something that these girls that the, that nobody else can, which is why they've been using her so consistently." Yep. And you know what, you wrestling fans out there, man, as much as we love y'all and we appreciate y'all that support the Life Spots podcast, some of you ninjas about to get called out right now. Let's not mm-hmm. like that. Some of you ninjas, y'all are some fickle <laughs> hypocrites. You know that? Yeah. Because if Bianca wasn't getting the push of any bit of what she got, y'all have been out here like, oh man, why is WWE doing yeah, Bianca so right long? She's so yeah, talented. Exactly. She's so this. Exactly. She deserves yeah. better. She needs to go to AEW. She needs to go to Impact. Look yeah. at Trinity. Yeah. Says it, da, 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 da. But now all of a yeah. sudden you get pushed to the moon. Oh, we're tired of her. Oh, yeah, she's exactly. so defeated. Oh, this and it's like, nah, player, keep that same energy, okay? You yeah. feel me? Yeah. If you rocks with her, stay supporting her. If you don't, yeah. and she ain't your cup of tea, Fine, that's cool. Go over there. Yeah. You, yep. Yep. you know what I'm yeah. saying? You entitled to your opinion if she ain't your cup of tea. I won't I won't knock that. But don't be somebody that was, you know, on that train on her rise, 
She yep. gets there, yeah. now she's on TV, she's doing all these historic things, and now you're trying to treat her like Charlotte, which, you know, two totally different scenarios. Two oh, totally yeah. Totally yeah. Different oh, yeah. Scenarios. oh, yeah. You, 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 she ain't inserting herself in the matches yeah. like Charlotte, yeah. okay? That's a difference. It's a difference. Yeah, everything she's done has made sense. Like, every single yeah. story beat they put her in has made sense thus far. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. So y'all, y'all, y'all keep that same name. Go ahead. And hopefully, hopefully when she come back, we get nice Bubblegum popping heel Bianca and she can she can she can really shake things up. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. We, we, we need, we need, There's we still we need, more money need, to be made. We need, <laughs> bougie, we need bougie Bianca so she can come in and, and make them feel that way, you know? Yeah, I I can't wait for that heel era though. That heel era, it's coming, but when okay. it does come, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. Oh. She's she's the only person who can make I'm the best work as a baby face. And as mm-hmm. a heel, like she's so incredible. Yeah. Talk she's so incredible. Talk about that. That's all I'm talking about. Well, all right. Uh, thank you so much, Ash, for definitely giving us what's been happening in the ladies' universe of things. You know what I'm saying? So we look forward to definitely seeing what's about to happen uh, this week with the ladies as we go into two pay per view, uh, yeah. two pay per views into the weekend, along with the rest of this week. Uh, like dynamite and all that good stuff. So let's see what happens. So everybody loves a residential mistake. Everybody knows there's always a mistake waiting to happen somewhere. Cue the following soundbite. Uh, <clears throat> Rick, sir, what's, what's, that phrase, <laughs> what's that phrase I'm looking for that we get for the week? Uh, you know, up. I really have. I really hate that. I really hate that word. You know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I hate. I hate it? when people use that word. That's what botch. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Uh, there, uh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> there, that, that that word. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm kicking this over to our boy Rick, who's going to lead us into our favorite segment of every episode. Go on right ahead and kick it to him, Playboy Rick. Uh, what's happening? This is the botch of the week. We watch our peas. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mind our cues, cross our T's and dot our I's, you know? And uh, my botch of the week for this week, I got a, a kind of a double header, kind of in wrestling and kind of in the sports world. Okay. Uh-huh. So I'm going to start with the sports world with uh, Skip Bayless and Undisputed. Ooh, left- uh-oh, wait a minute. Hold <laughs> up, bro. What's up? He, he, done, he done left Michael Irving. Richard Sherman, and I can't remember the last cat's name. I can't remember. Oh, another. Uh, uh, I know who you're talking about. Uh, Michael Irvin, Richard Sherman, and uh, uh, oh, why is he leaving me right now? I, 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 I can't. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't think of his name right now. But they done took over that man's show. He can't get not a word in. <laughs> he, he, he he got three he got three hood cats on his show and they just he he over there looking look out of oh, place. Oh uh 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 Keyshawn Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson. Yeah, Keyshawn Johnson. <laughs> yeah. He got three hood cats but they don't he, he don't know what to do with them. I I feel like any one of them three would have been fine. You put all three of them on like you got too much uh toppings on your Sunday player. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 you think that means he, he he officially gonna stay at number two is that what it sound like you're saying it sound like uh, already he, Stephen he, a. he number four on his own show <laughs> oh well you know i mean because you know espn first take number one yeah, yeah they, 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 they split this quick, yeah. so you know. yeah and i mean they get they got shannon already so you know what i'm saying they got shannon lined up so oh yeah. He ain't, show show. Yeah. You know he ain't even on the show yet. You know what I'm saying? He ain't even on the show yet. Uncle Sharp, baby. Kinda, you know? <laughs> it kind of did it to himself. Okay. And uh, following up with that, since we talking about all that, uh, these football football cats, uh, WWE released their uh, NFL championship titles. I don't know if y'all saw. I saw that, yeah. Yeah. And, Come on. And, um, and unfortunately, the Jacksonville Jaguars got theirs pulled immediately because Tony Khan... So and company, wow. yep. But this is what I'm trying to figure out. The NFL owns, you know, what I'm saying y'all playing in that league. If the NFL signed a deal with WWE, you got to stay in your lane, don't you? You can't like, and uh, they had to make make a line of the titles 
so they got to be selling them somewhere. Right. But they but they pulled the Jaguars. So what did Tony, did Tony buy them all and he got them up in his room or you know? <laughs> you gotta be handing them out tailgate. Right, right. Like, like, <laughs> like, let me let me do a giveaway or they gonna make an AEW Jaguar. They gonna title. pop up this fall. Yeah, you're gonna see a wave of them this fall. <laughs> but, what, what, but what make it funny to me is scrolling on Instagram, WWE is pushing the Jaguars. <laughs> so they kind of trolling, they trolling Tony like, hey, we got that Jaguars title on deck. You know? <laughs> I have seen that ad and I have laughed because I'm like, yo, of all yeah. the teams in the belt. Uh, all the teams. Like, not low. Yeah. You, know what I'm saying? Well. you could you couldn't even promote your own dog on New York Giants or Jets right. or any yeah. of them teams. Oh, no, 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 no. no, it had to be them. Oh, they, they like they like. Yeah. Hey, look at this. <laughs> yeah, shout out to my boy Ango for uh, Ango content creator resident or like, of the Ango show who uh, went on Twitter to say in midst of that was like. Yeah, man, these Jaguar titles are just selling oh so hot like hotcakes to where they can't even keep them on the site. So, psych, like anybody cares about the Jacksonville Jaguars. I was like, you I, know, I was like that's right. a shocking. That's yeah, shocking. Like, come, on, come on, come on, man. Oh my not God. low, not low. Go for so, it. So y'all got any botches for me? Ash, how about you before I go into this thing? I got one. I got to ask you if you got one. So my botch of the week is it's like it's kind of like a mixture of two. Okay. So my botch is making Candice LeRae a jobber last week on Monday Night Raw. Mm. Okay. And I will say it's not over yet. So I'm still willing to to change my opinion, but Rhea Ripley's title reign. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Dang. it might be controversial. It might be controversial. I like but, it though. I like it. Okay. But that was really like my, I was like, oh, on a three hour show, you can't at least give Candace and Rhea like 10 minutes mm-hmm. on and a three hour show. Indy Hartwell as well. Because she also suffered that same fate like a week before. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And these matches are, I, I, I'm telling you, they don't even touch three minutes these matches mm. and like candace array can go like candace oh, yeah. array can go if you if you've like seen her work in nxt or even in the indies mm-hmm. she's a fantastic wrestler so i was just like mm. shocked yeah. Yeah, man. shocked and then she, she Rhea's won't. most significant feud right now is happening on nxt yeah. look at that so yeah. <laughs> Well, for those Candace, reasons, unfortunately. Candace, <laughs> Candace, I like that. Like Candace that. might turn up on the missing posters with Johnny. <laughs> Ooh, for real though. But you know that's what? That's what I'm saying. I, I, fun fact about that one. I think that's actually leading to something deeper than what we think. I oh, think that's I, actually, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, I think that's leading I hope to so. DIYs. DIY. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that would be a lovely title reign. Yeah, I, hope so, yeah. I think I, I think really we're getting so. that. Matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Judgment Day wins those tag titles, y'all. DIY. Perfect I'm... people to take it from them. Yep. DIY. Yeah, the perfect oh, underdogs to take it from them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I would love that. But uh, great botches, y'all. I like those botches right there. Those were good. Those were good. Um, I thought I was trying to see if I had one non wrestling related, but I do have one wrestling related that I got to just say this stood out to me the moment I watched it. We touched earlier in the show when we gave our Bray Wyatt and Terry Funk tributes and, and, and talked to y'all. Uh, if you didn't get it to hit chance to listen to it, make sure you go back into the earlier episode uh, portion of the episode and you can hear that. But my boss of the week has to go to WWE in the SmackDown tribute show for this one gripe that I had. As beautiful as it was, I had one gripe here. How the heck is you going to call the Street Profits versus the 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 brawling brutes a hardcore match when <laughs> basically that was not a hardcore I repeat that was not a hardcore it match a hardcore it wasn't match. even close you yeah. had one table spot one yeah. it was a wrestling match with a table <laughs> yeah. what the heck was that I said WWE yeah. 
Now you know you shouldn't have just you should have just mm-hmm. you should have left that alone. That shouldn't have been yeah. Yeah. no, bro. Even if they save that for like payback or something. Yeah, if you're not gonna go all the way, bro, don't go all the way. Don't do that. No. <laughs> okay. But uh, on the side note, the Street Profits new finisher is nasty. It's that nasty. Sky high neck bre- that sky high neck breaker. Yeah. I'm loving that. I rock it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I do want to put them in my box of the week a little bit too, though, because what I'm trying to understand and interpret is where are we going exactly with this? With this hurt because business. Yeah. The hurt business. Well, yeah, but I don't feel the aggressive heel. They're still coming off very babyface, right? Mm-hmm. The music's the same. The entrance is the same. The presentation's a little different in terms yeah. of the suits, the haircuts. Yeah. You know, they got clean cuts. But I'm still kind of like, okay, when is this gonna like transition to something I'm expecting here? Like, I'm still just yeah. waiting to see where they're gonna go deeper with this. Uh, yeah. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna roll with it. I rocks with the street profits a lot, so we're gonna see. Mm-hmm. I love Bobby, you know. We're gonna see how this all plays out. Where this is gonna go? Who else gets added? Maybe this results in Bianca down the line. We don't know yet. We'll see. Line, line everything Fire. up. Oh, the the first the first lady of the hurt business. We'll see, man. Go with the heel we'll run. We'll Heart see. business versus the Judgment Day. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Should be interesting, y'all. So, yeah. uh, stay tuned for that one. But that does it for our life's or oh, not life's botch. That's the show. Tomorrow. <laughs> That's me botching during the botch of the week. <laughs> that does it. <laughs> that does it for our botch of the week. I hope y'all keep it locked. Um, so, y'all, it's been a phenomenal show from head to toe. Um, in all honesty, I just want to thank y'all for tuning in with us, man, for sure. And we are pretty much wrapping it up with our final segment of this show, which is probably going to be a pretty easy one given this week in wrestling and how tough it's been. I think it's safe to say where we might go with this in the three count. But this is our segment where we basically go around the room and we basically just give y'all a moment of reflecting of what we've reflected on, whether it was wrestling related or non-wrestling related based off just how we've been feeling throughout the week. So for the first pinfall, I'm going to go ahead and kick it off to the lady first of the hour and Miss Ash. Ash, talk to the people as the first fall. What are you reflecting on as of this week? Um, I mean, with the passing of Bray, he was so young. It's definitely cherishing your life and making sure that you do what you want to do and live in the moment as things are happening because a lot of times when you pass you have that next day you don't know that you're going to pass you know you have you probably had things that you were planning on doing that day you know so make sure that the things that you're doing today matter be positive you know be kind to people that's where my mindset has been I love it and I I 100% agree with that wholeheartedly so as a first of all that's you can't get any better than than those wise words of wisdom and take that and apply that people because it really does matter very much so so rick playboy coming at it with the second fall man where you at brother yeah. where you feeling? i'm gonna i'm gonna have to pee back on that we touched on it a little bit like appreciate people in the moment you know like mm-hmm. don't don't take it for granted because you know, you might not have that choice to enjoy it. You got to look back and, and damn, I could have did this with this person or this with that person, mm-hmm. you know, like tell you, tell your people you love them, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, agreed. Uh, that's, that's, that's the two fall. And this is right here for the final three uh, to basically let y'all know, uh, piggybacking off of both of my fellow uh, cast members here and letting y'all know that, Life is valuable, man. Um, You only get one life. You only get one shot at life. Uh, So if there's something you've been chasing, as Ashley beautifully put, go after it. Do not hesitate. Every second, every minute that ticks by is one less on your life that you got to realize we only get older. We're only going forward versus backwards. Trust me, I wish we could be Benjamin Buttons out here and reverse backwards. But... You know, unfortunately, the way life is, we go forward in the other direction. So it's just one thing to let y'all know that, hey, at the end of the day, tell your loved ones that you love them. Spend time with your loved ones. Never be too busy where you can't spend time. And never be too under the way where you are 
not valuing yourself, valuing those around you. Because again, you don't get one opportunity at all those things. So with that, people, we thank y'all so much for rocking with us. This was by far, so far, probably the best episode we've done as a trio. That I love it very much. From top to bottom, I would say this was a phenomenal episode. I hope you guys definitely enjoyed it as well. If you didn't, man, I don't know what we could do to make this even better, but y'all can <laughs> do me a favor and tell us, though. You know what I'm saying? If this feedback is welcome. Yeah. Feedback's yeah. welcome. Yeah. So if y'all didn't like this one, man, just do me a favor. Leave us a five-star review right there if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. Uh, leave a five-star review. Tell us your thoughts. Tell us what you feel about the show. And if nothing else, man, give us a five-star rating just so other people can check out our show, listen to it, and check out this amazing crew because I love this crew, man. This crew is here specifically for a reason to continue to bring y'all the vibes, entertain y'all, and do like what we did here. Bring y'all laughs and even when it's a sad wrestling week, you know what I'm saying? Um, my final thought also, now that I think about it, crazy thought y'all is the fact of looking at how many wrestlers we have lost in this year yeah Um, you know what i mean and it's just wow that we lost jay briscoe bray wyatt you know what i'm saying um iron chic terry Mm -hmm. funk you know all of these like legends in ways where it's like yo what is going on this has been a really crazy year so it's just Again, thank y'all so much for rocking with us and and really just basically healing with us as we heal with you (laughs) and let y'all know that we care just like y'all care. We are here like y'all are here. Uh, So leave us a five-star review if you're on Apple Podcasts. If you are watching this on YouTube and you have watched this entire video, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. All right, make sure you follow the Life's of Botch podcast on instagram on tiktok and of course on youtube as well um also you can follow the brand ots media co all things ots media co uh look on youtube look on instagram look on twitter ots media co is the brand behind this brand and without that brand we do not have the likes of botch crew so with that thank you all so much for rocking with us Tell a friend to tell a friend. And of course, real quick around the room, tell the people where they can find and follow you personally. You can find me, Ash Benny, at Ash Benny on all social media. Catch me on IG. That's Mr. Playboy number two, you. All right. Follow your boy on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Highlight Life, H I L I T E Life. And as always, we thank y'all so much. So you already know, one quick time, I need everybody to throw up those two sweet symbols with your boy. Take it up for one quick two sweet. Peace, baby. Until next right. week, we'll catch y'all again, man. Y'all have a great, great week. Bye. Bye.